Well, hello everyone! Welcome to Cold Hard Witch. We are Lawful Stupid RPG, and we're thrilled to have you join us while we play through Rhyme of the Frost Maiden module with some additions sprinkled in. My name is Buddy, and I'm the DM of this adventure. The votes have been found and counted, and apparently I am the Triflin DM. Woohoo! Congratulations! Uh, well, thank you, thank you. Uh, let's see who we have here tonight, shall we? We have Chael playing Delphina, our Azamar Life Cleric. Rodney playing Flynn, the Psy Warrior Fighter. Madeline playing Zalvana, our devilish Azamar Bard. Pike playing Professor Reginald, our human warlock. And Evadaris playing Luca, Mostly. our blood hunter. How is everyone tonight? Good. That's good. Yeah. That's On the good. edge of trepidation. Like, I can just see Flynn's Ooh. got them bubble guts <laughs> running already. Yep. When we last left our party, they had even more heated discussions on what to do next. The Emergency Council of Targos only seemed to want to ask questions and quickly shot down every idea that was given. This made Flynn quite cross, and his actions caused everyone to be asked to leave. They headed to the Wolf's Pelt Inn for a drink and to cool off for a bit. They were encouraged and emboldened by the owners of the Wolf's Pelt, to proceed with the plan in spite of the council's indecision. And now, friends, let us rejoin our party who sit upon the precipice of war with an unknown number of Durgar while the fate of Targos and its citizens hangs in the balance. I know last week I said that the time clock would advance forward to the point where a ship was ready to kick off, but I have changed that. DM Fiat, so deal with it. Uh... Would you guys, just for the audience watching tonight, like to just give a quick high-level recap of what the plan is? The unsanctioned, uh, unapproved plan. Right. So, um, we have a small cache of Shardolin that we are going to have our one-eyed magic friend charge with fireballs um, and the plan is to get the Durgar in the town. We're going to meet them on like the outside side of the town gates. Get the Durgar to the Chardolin. Blow the Chardolin and do a last stand uh, with the town with as many soldiers and townspeople that are left that are going to fight. I mean, I mean, really, this this could be like a five minute stream. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if come it, on in, Durgar, yeah. and then boof, and we're done. If it is that quick, we'll spend the rest of the time just patting ourselves on the back about how cool the the idea was and how yeah. we haven't started calling her One Eye Valen. <laughs> I think you said One Eye One Eyed Magic Lady. One Eyed Magic Lady. Ah, <laughs> uh, man, that's. Kind of a title. Hmm. <laughs> we'll wait on that. <clears throat> so. Um, well, she's a black magic woman. So song title. <laughs> <Full> circle. <laughs> I like it. I, I mean, her school of uh, magic is necromancy, so black hey, magic. What? That works. <laughs> uh, oh, did I not mention that earlier? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these are yeah these are undead fireballs that she's putting into the Shardolin. Um, How does that work? <laughs> sounds sexy. I don't know what it is, but it <laughs> We're doomed. We are doomed. So at the the Wolf's Pelt, um, where you guys had also s said that you were going to bring the town folk who weren't able to fight um, and, and maybe set it up as a, a triage place for anyone who was wounded to be treated. Uh, you guys have been... Um, while you're making the plans, Delphina and some of the, the Winter's uh, daughters have been kind of setting things up and making as much bed space as possible. And Delphina, you're in kind of one of the rear rooms and you're just looking in one of the closets to see if there's any more supplies or any more space in there that, that you can put stuff. <clears throat> and you find a a wrapped bundle, like uh, something wrapped in, in like a burlap type fabric uh, just at the back of the closet there. I'm going to reach in and take that out. Okay. It's, it's a little bit weighty. Uh, it's kind of large, but it is, it's thin. It's very flat. 
Um, and you begin to untie the burlap and, and open it up. And inside is a shield. Please roll me a perception check. Perception <laughs> check. Thirteen. So this is this is a shield, but it's not just any shield. Uh, as soon as you get it unwrapped and and reach to grab the handle to turn around and look at the front, you can feel the a connection with it. Um, this isn't just a shield. This is your shield. The shield that was left behind when you were pulled through the portal when Herrick disappeared and Pike lost his arm. His arm's still attached. His arm is not attached to it, but okay. you, the, you, you know, with, with an attuned item, you know that you're attuned to something, and as soon as you grab the handle, you know this is your shield. Why is it always Delphina? <laughs> Hey, you get, you got crew feel, so... No, 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 no. I'll trade. I, just, <laughs> I don't even trust what's going on right now. <laughs> uh, you, uh, well, you'll have to wait till she comes out, and then you can incite her. Um, <laughs> Could be icy. Show to everyone. Does it look like it came from the depths of hell or anything? Like, no, that doesn't nope. look like I just, demonic or... No, I mean, it, it, it legit, like, it, it, when you attune to a magic item, you know the item Ooh. that you're attuned to. And when you, when you pick it up, like, it feels just like it felt before you left home. And you think about maybe something that happened in the town hall. What happened in the town hall? I'll send it to you in the chat. You're my favorite. You're such my favorite. <laughs> I have so many concerns. <laughs> what did what I did, do? What did I do? <laughs> I'm a dummy. I'm a dummy. <laughs> I'm a dummy. I'm a dummy. You're fine. <laughs> <clears throat> awesome. Everything is awesome. Uh, so, you... uh. You finish up in there and can go back out into the front and, and actually could give Flynn back his shield. I will actually do that quickly because I am very excited at finding my uh, my old shield. Why was it in a closet? <laughs> Why is no one asking the important questions? <laughs> the the keeping, room. professor. Well, technically, I don't know that, that she just found a shield yet because she has a to me, so I don't and, know that, and that. that's why I said she could go out and talk to you guys. Uh, but I'm gonna look around. I mean, is there anything else in the closet? There's not. It. Uh, I mean, some some old shirts and uh, like things that you might expect to find in a closet. Um, But there's not, nothing else of, of special note. I mean, geez, how much how much shit do you want, girl? I just gave you your shield back. <laughs> Damn. I want all of the stuff. I want all of the stuff. <laughs> I'm the pacifist. I, just, I need all of the things. I, need, I just want to free a demon. <laughs> <laughs> you can change him. Um, I can. You can, ch you can change him. I can, I can totally change him. You can uh, make him a devil. Are you? <laughs> uh, he's already an arch devil. Um, so, anything else that you'd like to do in the closet that holds no more gifts for you? Damn. I will uh, send a silent thank you to Elder. And then, uh, Leaf, I have something really cool to tell you. And then I'm going to get oh, up God. and <laughs> go downstairs. <laughs> Hashtag Delfina is my favorite. <laughs> um, the, you move out back into the main room. Um, it, the wolf's pelt is overflowing with people. Um, Theo, in fact, has talked to some of the neighbors 
and secured the use of, of their buildings as well. Um, at the bar, you see the rest of your party. Um, Guard is there, and Josie is there. And as you walk up to, uh, to, to where them there, you can hear that they're in conversation. Um, Guard and Josie are telling you all that there are the 50 guards that you knew about and probably 150 able-bodied citizens. Um, as far as folks who aren't able to fight, there's about 100 elderly, uh, about 150 kids, and 150 mothers and fathers. Um, they suggest Flynn maybe pulling 20 of the, the, the guard forces to kind of set up perimeter around the wolf's pelt and the adjacent buildings, but... How many guards are, did we have? <laughs> uh, so you have 50 guards and 150 able-bodied citizens that can fight, so that's 200. Okay. Um, so they kind of forward the idea of leaving 20 around the that area there just to make sure that the folks that need protection are protected. Right. So... Uh, yes, and ending. your sheet, your sheet auto-updated. I add it to your sheet, Delphi. Uh, okay. And so you're up to date now. Everyone's doing math. They're they're on high <laughs> alert. Everyone, this is this is the math the math stream. Suddenly, everybody's crunching Sorry. the numbers. Um, Professor Guard also tells you that uh, Freddy has arrived and is willing to do what he can, whatever that can be. Oh, sorry, Oliver. Almost okay. Um, should I go meet with Freddy? I don't know what to tell them to do. Are we still planning to get people on the boats? Are we leaving them here? If there is... Well... Yes, let's put them in the boats, uh, because if the wall, if, like, if they if they breach the wall, we're gonna have to lead them to the water, and hopefully lemmings them into <laughs> in there and have Freddy give us some backup. Okay. Um, let's. Do this, maybe. Um, stop me. This is a bad idea. If we um, use two of the bags of Chardolin up front to blow uh, for the Durgar, and then you have one more out by the lake, because if they come in and they look for it, and we have like a decoy, a second decoy thing of Chardolin by the water, that'll be where we can leave them to go, which will be where Freddy would be, and have the people further out in the water, because I. We're, they can stay out in the water and Freddy can be like the last barrier between the water and help us on the shoreline. I don't know. I'm spitballing here. Well, I, I mean, that. I think the boats is a good fallback plan, but I mean, if somehow they see just in the boats on the water, there's basically nothing to do but drown then. So yeah, I think, can we get people out to where there's actual open water? Yeah, so if you, if you took people to, here, let me switch the map. If you took people to the ice dock, uh, which is 100 yeah. yards or so out. Um, you could, um, you know, there's liquid water there because that's the, the makeshift dock that they have yeah. built to um, be able to get to liquid water to to go still do fishing. So there's okay. there 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 are docks built there, and there's like a walking path. Or it's I mean mostly it's just some pikes that are stuffed down in the ice to mark this is the way that we go. But the ice through there is so thick that there's at least to the edge of the harbor wall. There is no liquid water under the ice. It is solid to the ground. Well, okay. 
Um, See, I think that'll be the escape plan, more or less, is... Gotcha, yeah. If things... Try to hold them off in town if we have to, getting out across the ice to the ice dock to the boats as an escape would be the, like, basically a last resort. And I, I, I think Freddy's only job at that point would be trying to make sure people don't get eaten or, like, picking people up that fell out, fell in the water, that kind of stuff. As far as, like, dealing with the actual Durgar, would it be easier if we kind of tried to round them up and keep them in, like, one spot that way could just like keep fireballing them like i was thinking of maybe like flanking kind of coming around shining a bright light and making them kind of like not be able to retreat what why would you shine a light because they don't like light then they're gonna be here in the dark well right? well they don't they don't like sunlight do you do you well, have something that can shine sunlight i mean i have fire light Ish. I'm a light bearer, so I, I don't know, will that affect them that way? Uh, I'm a I, light, I'm a light bearer too. If that helps, I will say that I think both of you, if you look in your spells, don't have anything for another two spell levels, maybe, that actually have anything that is sunlight. Even the spell. Do you, you want to talk about just a a, a hate filled rant online? The Ooh. spell daylight. Mm-hmm is not sunlight and everybody online is like well what the fuck kind of light is daylight if it's not sunlight and (laughs) jeremy crawford and everybody else is like it's my game it's not sunlight (laughs) so uh that's i i delved into the the abyss of 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 man there reading about that for you guys so firefly or phosphorescent moss isn't uh going to isn't going to affect them I no they they're they're not light sensitive they have sunlight sensitivity uh kind of like oh, va- va- okay. vampires or or undead okay got it got it got it okay so. not like our friend the drow who also has sunlight <laughs> sensitivity oh, i think that is um i think I've what, ab- that. what about what about presentation like i could pretend like there was some sun that they're like it's not actually sun but they're like oh no sun ah! so they'll like run or something. I don't know. You know what? <laughs> I, you're pretty persuasive. Um, <laughs> so that that might work. I would love to watch that go down. Okay. I was just trying um, to. Yeah. I don't know that any of you have anything. Yeah. Drow have sunlight sensitivity as well. Not just light sensitivity. Okay. Um, I don't know that any of you have anything that can produce large quantities of sunlight, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. No. Well, I could still flank them and cast fairy fire or something. Just, <laughs> just whoosh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because we we don't have to uh, like stand in a line in front of the mm-hmm. gates to town, right? Just you, like, apparently. I, I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, if that's the you case, I'm. Comment. We're going with it. Flag. I might have to redo the map if you're not just going to stand in a straight line. Oh my god. <laughs> um, I'm, but like, like we. You, you know, have people like hide out along the side of the path leading up to town. Yeah. So, you know, the one, two. You want to fight them in the open? Blow the chart. I don't want to fight them in town. Do you want to fight them in town? I mean, there's a bit more cover in town. <laughs> out there, out there on the snow, I'm kind of a sitting duck. Professor, sitting here, you're a sitting duck. Yeah, but at least I can hide. <laughs> there's nowhere to hide out there. Well, you can, we, we, we can go out there and actually do stuff. Like you can, like, did you just say you get me a box? <laughs> he said he get you a box. It's going to have to be no, a pretty like, big box could... though. <laughs> yeah. Like, so, so we want to get them in, in the town. I just, I'm, I'm worried about, I guess, damage to the actual houses. I was keeping, trying to keep that to a minimum, but I mean, these people have rebuilt before. So I mean, is there a not... way to stand on the walls? Like, are the, are the walls thick enough to, like, be banned? Absolutely. Yeah, you've actually okay. seen, um, before most of the guards left, you saw that there was a, a kind of standing patrol up there along the walls. Because that's where I imagined myself, is I'm inside the wall on top, and then the Durgar are out there. 
smart. The uh, the front door to the wolf's pelt opens. Still, it's still buzzing with activity. Um, although Theo has procured the use of the room of the the buildings next door, the haven't really kind of started moving anyone out yet. So this place is just jam packed at 3 p.m. on a on a weekday. Um, the door opens and in walks Grindel and Russell. They, uh, for those of you watching who may not know, they are part of the emergency town council who Flynn and company recently, I won't say they pissed them off, but they pissed them off. Russell <laughs> runs the dance hall. Yes, the, uh, Got it. the trip and shuffle. The trip and shuffle. Um, part dance hall, part knockdown, drag out bar fight. Um, so the two of them walk in. Sorry, I've been watching you guys and not staying prepared on my maps. How dare. How dare you. How very dare, sir. Yeah, Russell looks like Ethan, um, what's his name? Obi-Wan. Joe McGregor. E yeah, Ewan, yeah. Ewan McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, the two of them come in and sit down at the bar right next to all of you guys. <laughs> Are you you're running a special or something? Kind of crowded for this time of day. And Josie just kind of laughs and brings them both, both a drink. And Grendel sits there and he's just looking down at the bar. But he's speaking Flynn to you. Flynn. It's obvious to me that, well, you've never been a speaker before. You aren't burdened by bureaucracy and indecision. You think like a fighter. You think like a leader. You think like a captain. And he turns to you, and in his hand is a necklace. And the necklace has a large pendant shaped like the crest of Targos. Um, so it's the, the ship with the sail. Uh, except that it is made from gold and it is intricately designed and carved. It is, it, it is beautiful. It, it is a beautiful piece of hardware. But he extends this necklace out to you. Uh, I take it, I pick it up. Do you don it? Do you? Um, I'm gonna ask him. What does this mean? Well, if you if you think you're up to it, you uh, you get to make the decisions on the forces for whatever comes tonight. Uh. All right. Do you put it on? Uh, yeah, I put it on. <laughs> it, it you instantly have <clears throat> just a wave of feeling wash over you, and you you feel the responsibility of a leader, but also you feel the power of a mentor. And so, f please make a note of this, Flynn. During the battle tonight, every single round you will have two legendary actions that you may use only <laughs> only to issue commands to the militia for the battle. Like, hey, come pick these fuckers up that are on us or go out there on the field and, and, and kill or, you know, hey, you guys take your pants off and dance. So at the, <laughs> at the, at the end of anyone else's turn, you will be able to issue a command to the militia army that can hear you twice every round. Holy shit. Right? <laughs> okay. Right. All right. <laughs> We're cooking with Grisco. <laughs> now, Captain Flynn, there are archers on the wall near the gate. And after we talk to the town, I will take a group and Russell will take a group. When the battle begins, we'll charge the front gate and get as much of the fight outside as we can, unless you tell us not to do that. 
Uh, I'm gonna look at the professor. Are you gonna be good up on the wall with archers? Can we get out of the way? Yes. What's what's the catch of? The catch is, if you all fuck up, we all die. <laughs> well, that's like any other day of the week. Aye, but at any other day of the week, it might happen. Tonight, it will. Don't the Tuesday. <laughs> um, Valen will will kind of step forward a little as well. I uh, uh, finish, I finish the, the the thing outside, and I, I think I would probably be up on on as well. I, I don't I don't have much magic left, but being as squishy and she kind of like pushes on herself as squishy as I am, uh, that might not be a bad place for for me as well. All right, uh, you'll be up on the parapet with the archers. Keep us covered. And if they break the wall, just turn around and shoot on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Copy that. Uh, Zalvana, where do you think that you will want to be to crack off your shatter? Um, I'm going to, I'm going to let Flynn direct me a little bit cause, um, I want to be the most effective mm-hmm. with shatter. So, um, if, if you think that it's better for me to be outside kind of hidden flanking or like have me be a backup, then I will do that. But I just want to be the most effective for that. So let me know. I also have fairy fire. Like I got stuff. Let me know what you need. Valen, you. Valen will, will <laughs> chime in. Uh, I'm, Sorry to interrupt, Captain, uh, but it, you know you can't set that thing off inside the city. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's not going to be set up inside the city. No, no. Okay, I mean, it. it needs to be as far out as it can be. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what it's going to do. The, um, um, oh, this is going to be stupid. Yeah, I, I, I have... Uh, <laughs> so... Check it out. We we uh, I I just I just finished putting the magic in. Uh, some of the boys were helping me load it up. Um, we did make it manage to make it look like a little more than the thirty pounds. But the only way we could do that was by propping the sacks up on a bunch of oil flasks and a small box of mining explosives that we found. God. <sighs> <laughs> oh my god uh, and she I, and she I, she has I just take, the... I... <laughs> no i'm gonna take her take her head in both my hands and like the fattest kiss on, on the mouth like, <laughs> I'm she, like ah, yes! she will she will take it and just <laughs> she has just the biggest grin with that i uh i thought you i thought you might approve of our of our methods okay uh zalvana yes so we're gonna we're gonna do this a little ways from from the gates to the, to the town. Yep. Right. Um, mainly because so they can see that we're meeting them, and mm-hmm. they can see uh, we brought the Chardelin, and uh, hopefully, the, so the explosive radius will be far enough away. Um, I'm gonna need you to come down with me. Okay. Um, I'm gonna do some talking to 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 the Durgar and. Hopefully, as they start to come and gather, I'm going to turn around and run. And when I start running, I need you to cast Shatter. And then yep. I need you to start running. <laughs> okay. Um, can do. No, no, no hiding it. Dig as deep into the snow as you can so we can lead them to everyone else at the city walls and we will make a stand there. So just for the DMs, like making sure I understand, your secret signal to this giant plan that we've been working on for three weeks is... Is you running. I'm going to turn around and run like a bitch. I just want to make sure I have the secret signal so I can have the battle music um, ready. Yeah, that's my understanding yeah, as well, yes. Just checking. Um, uh, was it... What, what is the... In Harry Potter, Avadika's... Uh, Avada Kedavra? <laughs> yeah, that one. There it is. <laughs> Um, Shatter! <laughs> yeah, because I... I <laughs> <laughs> Avodica Durgar. 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Put it on there. Yeah. Part two. Yes. <laughs> well, let's see if you guys can actually shatter it first. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, yeah, um, we'll see about that. Um, uh, um, question. Which, um, I'm trying to like figure out which one is more powerful, Thunder Wave or Shatter? Uh, shatter because you can do it at 60 feet. Thunder Wave is a cube that starts, uh, it's a 15 foot cube that starts at you, I believe. Yeah, yeah. but like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to be running. I'm going to be like there casting shatter and then running. You, yeah, but you want to be 60 feet away. Yeah, yeah but you to be away from it. Valen, uh, Valen will remind you that a standard fireball has a 20 foot radius. Ah, okay. So just 20 feet and then. Got it. Okay, cool. Little, and, little, little, little more, yes, yeah. and she will tell you that she has used five spell slots. Oh, worth of <laughs> yeah, three, right. three, three All level, right. three level threes, and two level fours. Wait, so should I like start running with you, and then as soon as I'm sixty feet, cast it? You should be sixty feet away to begin with. Okay, because but I'm, I'm 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 following you out there, right? Uh huh. Yep, but you won't follow me to the payload. All the way. Okay, got it. Yep. Uh-huh. Got it. Uh -huh. Here with you. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> got it. Here, done. Got it. Cool. Check. Shut up. Uh, Flynn, when I you just turn got my gold right now. When you turn back from that that gold schlager, what is that? When you turn back <laughs> from that conversation, uh, standing on either side of uh, of Grendel it, are two elves and two dwarves. I mean, you haven't heard the door open. You haven't heard anybody around you make any fucking noise. Like it's a little bit scary how quietly they have slipped in. Um, uh, the one of the elves comes up to Grendel, uh, sir. He looks over at you and sees your new hardware. Oh, uh, sir. They, uh, a few of them have uh, have begun to arrive outside the gate. Uh, currently, they're just moving in and beginning to set formations. Uh, three holes opened up out front, and a few are climbing out. There, some were were wagoned in. Uh, they were hard to see until they were right up on us. Some sort of camouflage they were using, but no, that's uh, no camouflage. It's just straight up invisibility. <clears throat> uh, well, you know that they probably couldn't make a wagon invisible. Um. And he might even say that to you. You would know that, Captain. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but we'll we'll keep eyes on them and uh, and keep keep you up to date. Uh, Grendel will will introduce them as a they're a, a scout team, a favorite of his uh, on loan from Bryn Shander. Um, they use for advanced scouting and tracking. Um, and the male elf will actually look at you and say that Grendel mentioned something that you guys said about. Should should we be able to route them and make them retreat, tracking tracking the Durgar back to wherever they're launching from? Yes. Um, yes. Would you? Uh, is that something you'd be interested in in us doing? And and you look and the, one of the elves and one and the male dwarf, the, the male elf and the male one of the male dwarfs, obviously it seems like they're rangers, um, and they are they are dressed for the conditions. It's like the digital snow camo. That you you would bet that if they were thirty five feet from you, you couldn't see them if you were outside. The female elf and the other dwarf <clears throat> are much more kind of muted, kind of uh, browns and grays. And he will tell you that they they form an, an above ground and underground team. So they have they have done things like this before. If you are interested in. Their their tracking services for the for the Durgar. Uh, I'm a glance at the professor. Um, well, we, I we had planned to use Crufio, but um, I mean, the more the more the merrier, right? The more the more eyes we keep try to keep on them, the better our chances are. Yeah, yeah. I don't see a reason why why they couldn't. Uh, so, excellent. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. We will uh, we'll continue to report in as as the force grows, and I mean you watch them walk out, but you don't hear 
you don't hear their footsteps. You don't hear the door open. You're like, how the fuck are they doing? That's a good trick. Like, <laughs> like Fairy Owl needs to learn that trick. That's a good trick. Those are boots. Are the boots like is, that? Is, is it the boots? boots like what you got? Like <laughs> um, I'm gonna look at Grendel and just who who were they? The uh, when you get to be as old as I am, you you end up with a lot of friendships, and uh, they they actually live and and work out of Bryn Shander and. The speaker there owed me a favor, and so I've been, I've been using them to, to try to track down some, uh, some some other, some other things that are going on around here. Some goblins that are, that are causing some havoc. But I knew that, that this was a much more imminent situation, and so I recalled them. Right. Um, I assume they can be trusted. Yes. Well, they've never let me down. They've never let Juvessa down. So, I mean, as right. as trustworthy as 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 anyone, I guess. Uh, Krufiel, Krufiel, are you here? Ah, I, I am Krufiel, the professor's hand. <laughs> Krufiel, did you see those those four that were just in here? Ah, uh, yes. Shall, shall I kill them, Master? No, nope. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, no, no, killing bad. Killing's bad. Well, it depends on the context. Um. Yeah, just when when the Durgar are, are fighting and everything, if they try to flee, you know how I, I told you. Remember, I, I gave you. Mm. You remember yes, what you're supposed absolutely. to do. To, yes, follow them. Do not get caught. Report back. Yeah, exactly. Oh man, you're so good. Uh, well, those folks are going to be doing roughly the same kind of deal. Um, so it's a competition so can, then. Uh, I'm not going to tell you no, but like friendly competition, you can work together. Like if you find the track that they didn't be like, aha, I got this one. And I do feel the professor's hand. I found the track that you did not. Yes, yes. I have it. Ah. I have it. Yes. Yes. Perfect. But mm. yeah. Delfina, that is, that is a new, beautiful new piece of equipment that you have. Thank you. Oh, oh thank you so much. Uh, you, you can perch on it if you want to. Th this and little part right here. And he will go over and perch. What all of you see now is a shield that Delphina did not used to have. She used to be brandishing Flynn's Wolfguard shield. Um, but here, since since the folks at home didn't get a chance to see it, I'll uh, I'll pop it up again. It's um, amazing. It's beautiful. No Maybe. better shield ever. It is a a, a, <laughs> a beautiful uh, kite shield. <clears throat> Fine, fine craftsmanship. Um, but she did not have that before. Delfina, where did you get that? Oh, it was upstairs in the closet. <laughs> this this used to be my old shield. I'm, I'm not really sure how it got there, but I'm really glad it's back. I missed it. You don't think that's strange? Well, no, not really, because I'm attuned to it. So I it, maybe it just followed me. Or, or Lady Eldith could have sent it back to me, or my mother, or my grandmother. Maybe Levi. I don't know if he can really do that or not. But it could have been really anybody that I know that put it in the in the closet. It was wrapped up really, really nice. But you know, the last place I had it was at home. Oh, Flynn, I need to give you back your shield. Uh, right. Yes. Here you uh, go. Thank you it, for letting me borrow it. Uh, you're, you're welcome. I'm glad I'm you have it. Able to keep you safe. That's awesome. I, I felt so lost without it. I'm so glad I have it back. Oh, me too. We're going to talk about the fact that she found it in the closet. What? No, why Delfina, was she looking you in the closet for it. Um, it's it's Delfina. You, it's fine. I mean, she came here in a portal. A uh, portal. Yeah. Happen a lot around us. Yeah. That, it's that, true. The, 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 the second what is normal is so <laughs> far gone, folks. The second leading name instead of the Harbingers was the Portalers because they're just <laughs> they're like fucking portals all the way down. Uh, this is actually a reboot of Sliders. <laughs> <laughs> Except it won't be all shitty, and they'll stay home when they actually get home. Exactly. Um, still mad about that. Um, Delphina, I am very concerned for you well, and that. What? It's my, no, it's mine. And it doesn't concern you at all that it just showed up. Well, no, because there's, there's a lot of people that could have sent it back to me. 
I had left it at my mother's, so I assume that's that's where it came from. And I had a meeting with uh, with Lady Eldest, so. Do you, you had a meeting? A f- you had a meeting. Well, well, sort of in a way, yeah. What kind of meeting was that? With with Eldeth. You mean well, like yeah. you prayed? You prayed? You prayed? You did? Well, no, she just sort of showed up. And you know, <laughs> how good are you with the uh, religion there? Prof. <laughs> uh, pretty, I mean, <laughs> on an intellectual level, pretty good. Don't be suspicious. Don't, don't be, be suspicious. suspicious. Don't, don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. I say, is there is there an insight or religion that I can do? Uh, don't be <laughs> suspicious. Don't be suspicious. <laughs> Sorry, I'm fine. But if you want, you can join my religion. <laughs> no, I'm afraid Elder that would love would be to have possible. you. Well, why not? She's great. You you would just have to be a little less violent because she's not a, a huge fan of that. See, I don't like violence either, but I do find <gasps> it necessary perfect. occasionally. No, see, uh... Krufio can join too. Do you want to be a cleric of uh, Eldeth? Ah, uh, yes. Cleric. Eldeth cleric. Very good. Yes. Yes. Looks yes. At, he looks at Professor. Yes. No. <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, apologies. Uh, I, Krufio, I mean, con- again, like I said, context. In the case of Delphine, I, yes, cleric of Eldath is very good. In mm, in the case uh, of in the case of you or I, I don't I, I don't see him. that going <laughs> very well. I am Krufio, cleric of Eldath. That's got a good ring to it, yes. yes. It does. Mm. Oh my god. <laughs> uh. Wait, when did this happen? When did you meet Krufio? Or Krufio. Um, late lady, the lady. Elda. Lady Elda? Yes. Yeah. When was this? Uh, when when was this? We've we've had so many. She <laughs> has not remember. <laughs> yeah, like two hundred back chats just in that one conversation right there <laughs> that she and I are talking back and forth. Uh, it was when you guys were in the town hall and you had brought the uh, the women who had been in prison and injured, uh, brought them up, and Zalvana and Delfina were helping to get them cleaned up. And before they brought them to the wolf's pelt, uh, Delfina had a uh, a little a little moment. Yeah, so, so right around then. So recently, all right. Recently, yeah. Mm-hmm. Honestly, like yesterday ish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would have been yesterday. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yesterday. You guys get up to a lot. I had even forgotten that it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, so, she just... so so much is already like on the precipice of like hitting the fan at this moment that I'm just I. I'll, Back. That's, a, that's a table for later. That is, yeah. that is a tough. That is yeah, a tomorrow problem. It was, when we our get there. back burner is getting quite full at the moment. <laughs> I, I know. So that's, we need that's, to, we need to have just like a, a big old conversation around the campfire later, but we don't have time right now. So she just <laughs> yeah she so it, it I think it's fine, Professor. I think she just brought me my shield, and and we had a chat, and she told me to help my friend because he really needs it, and then all other than that, yeah. Uh, she told you to help whom? A friend of mine. Is this friend Levi? Yes. Again, a tomorrow problem. A tom- I can't write, I can't do this today. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Eldeth is asking her to help Levistus, and that is a tomorrow problem. That's a tomorrow I'm not, problem. He needs help. I'm not disagreeing with you, but this... <laughs> But the scope of our tomorrow problems is astronomical. Uh-huh. Professor, tonight is a Tuesday. We got to deal with some Drugar. Tomorrow is whatever day it is, dealing with whatever she's got going on. I, I've only been here for 12 hours with you all, and I can tell <laughs> we got a fucking chore list. This is not the priority for the chore list. For those of you out there viewing in Twitch land, the best thing ever is to create a huge problem and then make your players not trust each other. <laughs> DM tips from the Triflin DM. <laughs> uh, so after now watching all of that transpire, uh, uh, Grendel will step in. Uh, 
Uh, uh, Captain, I would uh, I would request uh, your presence at the stage. We're officially canceling sacrifices and telling the town to well. And he looks around. Those like six percent of the town who don't already know the plan, what the plan is, and to buckle down and to to be ready. So if if you maybe have a just a few words of inspiration for everyone, that would be. That would be lovely, uh, but I hope to see you and all of the Harbingers at the... When he says the stage, you know he means where the where the cauldron feeding had been. Uh, mm-hmm. I, 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 I would hope to see all of you there uh, shortly. Um, thank you, Captain Harbingers. Josie. Just, uh, if we survive tonight, Josie, just put all this on my tab. Yo, yeah, great, I'll add it to all the other shit that I'm sure you're going to pay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And you can tell there's there's history and and fun, fun and a lot of fun and and probably a large larger than normal tab going on there. But it's probably half Josie likes. It's like oh forty gold for a drink, really Josie? Yeah, I'll pay this. So, so anything else? You guys want to go ahead and fight this whole shield thing out? Uh, back burner clear in time, because it's I back mean, burner time. I got nothing but time. That's not true, but... <laughs> Don't be no. suspicious. Don't, Don't be suspicious. Be suspicious. Um, Don't be suspicious. No, like I said, I don't disagree that now is not the time, <laughs> but we are going to have to make the time post sooner, sooner rather than later. Uh-huh, yeah. Yes. Um, and we will. Maybe, maybe yeah. I'll make it come true what I said in Discord. Maybe one day we'll have a spa day. You guys can just all sit in a in a hot spring, just naked, and just get it all out. <laughs> or we can just survive this night, and then we'll talk about it later. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, orgy. Yes, no, no, orgy good, orgy bad. No, 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 all day long. How? What? <laughs> Rufio, I'll, I'll, I'll teach you morals, okay? It's okay. I'll, I'll teach you. Well, I'll I'll let's, let's, let's just say nobody has seen what he is or isn't packing yet, so. Oh, God. Ooh. I don't want to. No one wants an ice, an ice thing. Hey, Ew, hey, I know hey one. don't you yuck don't that. Don't yuck anybody's <laughs> yum, Zelvana. <laughs> don't be yucking that yum. It's like a kickstand. Oh my god. Look at it, it's like a tripod. <laughs> oh god, why is it so just wet and fleshy? Oh. Wait, shouldn't it be not wet and fleshy, but like the opposite? Because it's no, ice? No, because you would expect it's, that. It's, it's, it's just icy, moist fleshiness. <laughs> okay. Anything else you guys want to... Plans, mm. discuss, talk about before heading to the stage area. Shut up! I'm fine. No, no, let's let's All go. Right. They were good. Okay. Um, I'm gonna move back to the basic Targos map because I just couldn't be bothered to make a map with a stage on it. Mm-hmm. Sorry about it. <gasps> How could? How could you? I'm not actually sorry. I know you're not. <laughs> I hear your voice. <laughs> uh, okay. So, the Harbingers. I wish I had the, uh, like, the Indiana Jones flight music for moving the H around. Uh, and, like, the d- dash line and stuff. But we don't have that kind of budget here. Uh, so, you guys go to the, um, what you know of is like the, the stage area, and uh, there are a bunch of people there. Um, this something that maybe you did or didn't realize is that the, at its height, this was a town of a thousand people. And even though some folks have left and then, you know, a bunch of guards and stuff had just left, yeah, there's probably still six, seven hundred people here. So there's there's kind of a lot going on, um, and as you as you approach, you you hear the uh, the the strong voice of 
uh, of Grendel up there, and you basically you hear him saying, "There's no more lottery, no more sacrificing of lives to the Frost Maiden," and you hear some cheers in the crowd. As we're taking back our town from the corruption that's been tainting it. You hear another cheer, and as you guys approach, he looks over and he says, "And and now I'd like to introduce." The commander of our forces, Captain Flynn. And there's there's some, some muttering, some murmuring, but they're waiting they're waiting to hear. They're waiting to hear from you, Flynn. Alright, I get up on, on the stage. Uh hey folks. Ooh. Uh can I? Does uh? <laughs> I was like, I said two words. That was just no, bad. Does... Like, hey, folks. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, does can thaumaturgy? Can I use thaumaturgy to make his voice louder, or does that only work for me? You know what? Normally, it would only work for you, but because I love the idea of him not knowing that it's coming and then just suddenly being so f- loud, <laughs> <laughs> love the idea of that. So I'll just, as he walks by, I'll just tap him on the shoulder and give him a thaumaturgy megaphone boost. Hey, folks, <laughs> folks. <laughs> Avalanche. <laughs> uh, my name is Tiberius James Flynn. And tonight I will be your commanding officer. You, you you hear some some like some claps. Your party is like, woo! And everybody's looking at them. <laughs> All right, Luke is not. Luke is like, I'm Luke is stab yeah. you. I'm stab <laughs> you. I got your fingers earlier. I'll get. <laughs> Tonight, your town is under a threat of Durgar due to the actions of your last speaker. So we're going to see it that tonight we handle that problem. If you are able to fight, I do ask that you join us. Grab any weapon that you can, and we'll be making a stand at the city gates. More clapping, more um, <sighs> kind of noise from out there. Uh, give me, give me kind of one more surge of something, and then I'm gonna have you roll. All right. Um, <laughs> look, y'all, I'm just a foot soldier. <laughs> I'm gonna be out there with the rest of you, sword in hand, cutting down as many Durgar as I can. My one and only goal is to make sure that this city sees the light of day tomorrow. So, and I pull out my sword and hold it up. <laughs> so, if you can. <sighs> Stand with me, because the night is long and full of errors. <laughs> Holy shit. Roll a performance with advantage. Quack. Or or a Quack. persuasion with advantage. Quack. Your choice. Quack. Quack. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, which, uh, going for persuasion. What's that? Uh, that's only a 16. You know what, though, especially with like the loud thaumaturgy voice and the fact that you drew your swords and at some of your party is are just losing their shit. You you want them. You want them over. And there's there's a thunderous cheer uh, for you. And Grendel looks at you and, and gives you a wink and a, and a smile. And um, it's about that time that you hear from outside the wall just kind of a counter cheer derisive kind of laughing and the crowd kind of begins to break up and you can hear them saying they're going to go and this oh my dad had a sword i got to go it's in the attic i think i got to go find it and so folks are they're trying to make their way and and get get some preparations done um grindel comes over to you you want to you know, go up on the wall and see what we're looking at. Hell yeah. So I am only going to do, I'm going to do a map switch and I'm only going to do a partial reveal. Um, because there are other things that are set 
set up on this map already. So you should all be on a black map right now. I'm going to do some revealing. Um, you uh, you head up the stairs. It is it is a very large map. Um, you head up the stairs. Up on top of the uh, the wall, and as the as the speaker said, there are, or as uh, Grendel said, there are archers up here already, lining the walls, and you crest over the edge. You like this build up I'm doing? Mm -hmm. You crest God. over the edge to where you can see, and you look down at the formation outside the wall. Ooh. Okay, right. okay. Not too many of them. Right. Not too many of them. Yeah, it's okay. quite a few. <laughs> Perception. Would, would uh would anyone like know. to like to take a guess on how many are down there? Uh, I'm gonna assume Four. that each one is not one. <laughs> Four hundred. Okay, so Flynn is um, 400. I'm, I'm guess. I would say around 200. I'm I'm secretly a gully dwarf and I can't really count, so <laughs> one. Uh 150. Luca? Look at him trying to do the, the count multiply math. That's what I did. Hmm. Well, I mean, if each token if each one of those only counts as one, we're maybe looking at about 200 hmm. 250. But if they count more than one, we're, there's a lot. There's a lot more than 250. Okay, good to know. Um, so you, uh, yeah, that's that's what you're looking at, um, party of mine. They are, they are not quite this well arrayed yet. You can tell that they're still kind of dicking around a little, and just just as just as your forces are still getting ready, they're still getting ready, and you hear the they heard your group over the wall yelling, and so they were. Just kind of trying to take the piss out of you yelling back a little bit. Oh, so they're here already. Great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're, yeah. We're, yeah. We're looking at them now. Yeah. Yeah. This is real time, Silvana. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Good time. Thanks, thanks for playing. Yeah. Um, All right. Cat. Cool. Ow. Um, any. Uh, any. What any, kind of. Um, Gate. What kind of should, should have asked this question before? What kind of gate does this town have? A very not, weak gate a, that Luke has discovered. That's, that's, not a that's, that's not a there. super good one. Uh, you uh, you remember Luca in in the rounds that he took said that the gate looks like maybe it had been broken or battered down before at some point and has been replaced with something sort of flimsy. Um. Though, if you if you want more info on that, we can talk about it as as you guys head back down. But any uh, any other thoughts while you're up here before we shift back to a different locale? Um, Just I don't want because I don't want you like making plans. OK, <laughs> you ever you ever make a map and at the end of it, you're like, man, why am I doing this to my friends? This I feel like a bad person now. <laughs> this is, this, I am not good. Well, at least there's some remorse to it. I also, uh, I also, I also nearly hit between their forces and your forces. I, I nearly hit what must be the token limit of at least my machine. Um, oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, this doesn't show any of your forces. Remember. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> um. So. Uh, any any other last stuff up here before I switch you back into a more basic map? No, I'm good. I mean, are we planning to address the Durgar from up here, right? No, we got we go down and talk to him. <laughs> We're gonna go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll convince him not to attack. I'll stay up here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. you know what? Maybe we won't be changing maps. Let me close that chooser. So tell me, Flynn, what your plan is then. Um, for right now, uh, I will uh, take. Is the payload on wheels? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's loaded right. in a cart. Yeah, so we'll we'll have to lead it out into um, we're a little close to the vest than just we wanted, but we'll take the payload out. Um, so it's going to take a couple of people. It's in a wagon that you would normally hitch like a horse to. So it's going to take a couple of people to actually pull the wagon. So if you're going to take it to them, I just want to we need to think about your Do we not secret have any... trigger is run. Well, they can uh, take it out. They can take anything? they can take it out and then immediately start walking back and then you schmooze for a couple minutes. True. Yes, Professor, there are some horses and donkeys, but no one wants to lose them in a giant unknown sized explosion. Yes, but if we were all clearly <laughs> skittish about being next to the wagon, it would be suspicious. I'm thinking. Oh, I, I won't be skittish. I won't be suspicious. Don't be, be suspicious. suspicious. I'm thinking putting some just donkeys on that would make it more convincing. I mean, that's that's a plan. We could. I'm oh, and then the measuring starts. This is my favorite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to see. All right. Uh, that's why you hide it. <laughs> I can still see it. I don't know it, how actually. to hide it. Uh, how do you hide it? Uh, in the measuring tool, there's one that is. Uh... Oh, it says hide from others. Yeah, that only I have lost. Can you see it now? I can see it. Yeah, you can't hide it, it... from the DM. <laughs> but like now, this now. You know, everyone else can't. But now you can't see me randomly measuring things. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, so based on what Valen said earlier, you know that the standard radius of a fireball is this big. The standard uh, diameter of a fireball is this big. So she would not suggest that you set it off. You know, you were kind of looking in... Like this area, it looked like. I don't know that I would set it off that close to the. Oh, Valen, no. Valen was, will say I, that. I was looking like here. No, I. I was like all up, all up in there. As far as here. you can. Yeah, get in there. If possible, I want it here. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah, you can, if you'd like, Flynn, you can use the draw tools to put a mark on where you'd like it to be. And then we can. Backwards measure on where you need to be. I have, I've made my ruler tool like really small, but it's the only one that I made small. I don't know how to get it back. <laughs> we'll just do a reload. Um, okay, so that's where you'd like the wagon to be when it gets cracked off. Yes. Okay. So where does that put Zalvana for 60 foot shot? It puts me right here. Almost okay. close enough to be on the wall. You'd have to be a little bit closer if you wanted to shoot it from the wall. Yeah, Just... I don't. It's, it's fine. I, I don't have to be on the wall. I would rather be out as like to help Flynn if he needed it. Okay. There's, a lot of, there's a lot of shit down here. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Grendel will say, you could always let them pick it up just inside the gate. Let them take it out themselves. Shows we're not True. skittish. But yeah. just, just, a, just a thought. Uh, and we did uh, requisition some wood from the Shipwrights Guild to uh, to reinforce the doors, the gates a bit, but he will look over at the army. Uh, it'll hold better than it would, but but not against not against the full brunt of that. So I think uh, if we can take the battle outside. It's going to be better for us. Yeah. Uh, let's give it to them. Have them roll it out. Um, and then when they start digging into it. Uh, 
I love it. Uh, all right, so let me put you guys back on a more neutral map. The uh, so the next little while goes by the the guard and the makeshift guard all finally start to to fall into place a little bit. Um, you know that you should, if they, if the Durgar keep their word, you should have, um, another couple of hours, um, to make, to make do what you need done. Uh, do I need to go talk to Freddy or did we like, can I send a guard to do that? You could it's send a little, it's a little rude to send a guard. He came all this way, but I don't, I don't know, know that sea monsters really have a. A handle on rude versus not rude. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, I mean, does the it shocks me that the professor does. As long as he gets his cheese, he's fine. Okay. I mean, she's not wrong. Yeah. All right. We'll just let the guard handle that. I don't want. To... <laughs> I'm gonna go talk to a fish, guys, and everything <laughs> pops off. <laughs> Yeah, like a thousand Durgar is like, I'm going to go chat with the sea monster. Is that okay, guys? I'll be right back. Don't war without me. Don't war without me. All right. So uh, the new plan is to let them come in, parlay a little bit, and then take their, their death wagon out. And crack it off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the professor is going to stay on the wall. Um, Valin is going to stay on the wall. Um, where would everyone else? Are you guys going to be upstairs or downstairs? Up on the wall with Valin and the professor. Downstairs with Flynn and the ground forces. I'm going to be downstairs with Flynn. And the ground forces. Okay. I think downstairs. Okay. Luca? Oh, I'll probably stay downstairs. Oh, I should be able to do more downstairs than if I stayed upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds so unhappy about it. Welcome back to the Eeyore Chronicles, everyone. Starring oh. Luca. Oh, well. I, I mean, guess I... I'll kill the Durgar. Good range. Maybe I can attack from up top. Pop, that's, pop. that's true. You do have some good range spells. Um, are, if you have ranged heals, you might could that's actually seven. do some healing from up top. Uh, let's see. Cure wounds is touch. Healing word. I do have healing word. Old person, shatter, 60 feet. This is all that time they've had in the whole last week to look at their spells, everyone, where they, <laughs> where they finally think, oh, yeah, crap, do. we're on the edge of war. I need to look at my spells. Oh, I didn't prepare that one. Today. Oh, no. Do you want to be upstairs? <laughs> upstairs, Delfina? I think I think so, yeah. I mean, there there are stairs there. You can change from up to down in yep. like around and, and so. i've got magic wings so yeah oh yeah that's actually that could be really cool yeah 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 oh yeah ride down like a valkyrie yeah 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 <sighs> bum, ba, da, 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 bum, ba, da, da. um okay any any other setup flynn you you're you're actually happy flynn with the 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 turnout of the of the forces kind of along the main route inside so far you uh it's they're not warriors but they actually shaped up kind of a lot better than than you think, and you're kind of walking through and touring them, and you just you know, pull those boots up, Private, and you know you're kind of doing the whole general thing before a war, look inspecting the troops a bit, but you're generally you're you're pleased, I would say. There's some some females in the in the lineup that are like, hmm, you're like. <laughs> There's a list. Put your name on it. Ooh. <laughs> a 
dance cards full. <laughs> I don't know that Flynn's dance card ever gets full. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> All right. So, uh, again, you should you still should have a couple of hours before things start to kick. Um, any kind of last minute. Uka's going to do two things. Okay. First, he's going to go hide his backpack in his bug out path. If he's going to have to take a bug out path, like he was planning all last session. <laughs> mm -hmm. Have you told the DM what that bug out path is yet? Nope, we haven't. So we'll, <laughs> we'll do it live. Sure. Um, sure. Hope it ain't blocked. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Uh, figure it out. <laughs> uh, uh, and then the other, well, ki kind of, Two more things is he'll make a bunch of arrows with whatever free time he has and uh i will do my little um making my weapons ice with my blood before the battle starts for at least two of them okay i have to roll a d6 and do damage to myself for each time i do it though so okay if yeah we'll say that there, there was stop. there was plenty of time earlier in the day for you to work on some arrows so you can you can use this moment now to just do to do the cutting of yourself to prepare them. Okay. So for my longbow, I'm going to do six points of damage to myself for that one. Okay. And then for my rapier, uh, another six points of damage. So I, that's all I'm making up today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for right now. So that damage is transferred into the arrows as extra? No, it is. So whenever I roll damage i do an extra d6 of cold damage now mm -hmm. on oh cool arrows. um but what happens is i physically hurt myself to give my blood off gotcha and i've dealt 12 points of damage to myself to do two like gotcha gotcha that. no it's all good <laughs> yeah um just as you're just as you're finished i'm sorry was someone gonna say something I was just going to say, it's not like I need full hit points or anything before this fight starts. It's fine. Uh, I was just go? wondering, war. my thing was how, like, mechanically, how long do those last? Like, could you short rest before that time? But I don't it know if that lasts matters. lasts until a short rest or a long rest. Um, so. So no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I cool. do have a healing potion, but I'm holding that. <laughs> okay. Maybe to well, the single digits. Do do we do we know that he's doing this? Does he tell us that he takes damage for this? Like, can I, can I give him healing word? You you can see me like cutting myself and putting like this ice expanding across my bow and across my sword. It could that. be that he's just getting ready to go to hot topic though. You're not super sure. <laughs> All right. All right. Well. I need uh, some more chains for my. <laughs> oh my God. I got to get some black lipstick. Oh, you Just use eyeliner. It works. <laughs> oh. It does. It does. Really? It really does. does it not taste yep. like mm -hmm. shit? Nope. No. It's, I mean, it's fine. lipstick doesn't taste great either. No, but I just. Depending on what lipstick you wear, what lipstick were you wearing? Anyway. Um... <laughs> Almost lost the game again, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're trying to get out of this battle. Well, you did lose the game because you just said it. God damn it. <laughs> These are the new rules. Samus sent them to me. Um, of course. Oh. I was free. So are you going to... I was free. Are you going to give him heals or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna do... I'm going to cast Healing Word. It's 1d4 plus 5. One second. Uh, where are you, d4? It's the triangle one. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, lucky you. It's a three plus five. It's eight. So hey, eight. he's 12 down. You gave him eight. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. That's actually pretty great. Uh, as you're doing that magic, you know, there still should be maybe another hour and a half or so left. And you hear against the gate. Boom. 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 As if someone's knocking. Who's out there? Hello. <laughs> it's just my DoorDash. <laughs> do you no, guys? Really. Can I? Do you guys know where? And... Do you guys know where Bremen is? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. You know, I, I had forgotten. Yeah. You. Uh. You look down and, 
you for sure see the uh, the Durgar that you know you had been talking to and a small entourage. Um, and they they have walked up to the gates and have proceeded to knock. And they're early, but you expected that. Um, Did we? Yeah, we should. Let's get this fucking show on the road. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Y'all good? Everybody good? We good? Got it. Mm -hmm. I'll make good. myself look like my white dragon form of Kang, because that's how they last saw me outside those gates for those Drugar. And... Okay. Fair enough. Right. Always protecting yourself. So the uh, there are two guards. Uh, they, they've moved the, the cart kind of into the middle of the path. You'll see in just a moment when I expand the map. Uh, but there are two guards, Flynn, that are at the gate that are on the latch, but looking at you, waiting for your signal. Um, I'm going to telepathically send to them, uh, wait till the payload gets far enough into their forces. Uh, Delvon, you be on this too, but like, we're gonna wait till the payload gets into their forces, blow it, and take care of the rest. They, they shake yes in affirmative, even though they're like shaking their head yes instead of replying or saying it out loud. So they're just looking at each other stupidly. Mm. <laughs> uh, sorry, and again, gonna... boom, boom, boom. Uh, I'm going to have them open the gate. Okay. Uh, I can't help it. I'm going to have them open a crack just so I can stick my head out. <laughs> Do you want to you want to advance up to the gate then? Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. We're gonna switch back over to that other map. I've been there this whole time. <laughs> so yeah, it. Uh, Oh my god. <laughs> they they crack the doors just a little bit and you uh you for sure the the Durgar that you had been dealing with whose name I will just give you is Karkam. Um and he has an escort of two uh, what you now know are soul blades and two of something that some other type of Durgar that you're not familiar with. Me out. Hey, you're early. Well, I know you have none more coming. I mean, I'll, we might be a couple more. We got a long night ahead of us and a lot of beds. <sighs> well, <laughs> we have scouts that way, and we have scouts that way. So if you had more coming, we probably would have stolen it. No, that was but a, that was an in, innuendo. You see, the the act of ejaculation is also called. That's not important. So. Uh, you see them, like they're like looking at him, like he's talking about something really important, and he's a little. Remember, he doesn't have a full grasp of common. Yep, I'm so well he's <laughs> all the guards like around you though are having a hard time like holding that in. They're like, yeah, brother, <laughs> and they they kind of <clears throat> re 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 affirm and re ready themselves. May we see your delivery. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ooh, you brought a lot of friends. Uh, I don't think we're gonna have food and drinks enough for everybody, but you know, just come on in. If, and have it, open the, should open you, the doors. Sh should you make good, we won't be staying for food and drinks. We'll be going immediately. Cool, cool, cool. Y'all brought the whole family out here? You got your aunts and uncles and mm. everybody? Okay. So, this is what we got. Um, so they're gonna. Uh, they're going to move just inside to where it is now flanking you triple flanking and, uh, Karkam will, will go over to the wagon and he'll, he'll look at it a little bit. You see him kind of doing some math on his fingers. 
<laughs> and he's going to look back at you. 50 pounds? 50 pounds only 20% of remaining 250 owed for the deal. Yeah, I, I'm aware. Uh, we tried to tell you before, but you weren't taking in the nuances of we're the new management here. We didn't have the paperwork for the old guy. You saw him, got his head chopped in. So this is what we could find. Um, and we're just hoping that this will hold you over for a little bit. Do, uh... He's going to walk kind of around the cart, looking at it. Are you going to stay up by the gates, or are you going to kind of follow back with him? I'll follow, I'll follow him. Okay. So. Oh, that's the draw tool still. On. That's the draw tool still. <laughs> For some reason, there's a blue hula hoop, so. Yep, sorry. Live, <laughs> live with it. I'll try to get it at the break. Um. He, uh, Karkam is, is kind of muttering out loud in Undercommon. And as you kind of make your way around, you see Grendel look at you and he kind of gives you one of these. All right. So, uh, look, this is what we got. If you could take this now, because honestly, this shit gives me the heaviest of GBs and y'all look like you really wanted it. I don't want it. So go ahead and roll this out. Um... He's kind of ignoring you, and now he's talking to the others in Undercommon, and Grendel's still looking at you. Oh, with, I should have cast look. Comprehend Languages. <laughs> that would have been great. Um, be like, well, I'm going to use uh, uh, my, my Detect Thoughts to, to, to see what Grendel needs, because I can't do okay. a two-way telepathy thing. So okay. I'm do um, do you motion to him somehow that you're listening to his head? I'm going to tell him first with my telepathy. Oh, I, yes. I okay. Can, I, yeah. <laughs> Copy. That makes sense. I thought you were just going to do it. Um, <laughs> and so in, in, in his thoughts in your head, you hear him say, they're discussing how long to give us for the rest of the shipment. And so you hear, again, Karkam is, he continues to, to kind of move around look at things uh, talk out loud to his people uh i'm gonna i'm gonna tell i'm gonna ask i'm gonna tell Grand, like give, give me a number and before he can answer because he's you can tell he's listening and trying to hear what's going on Karkham says when will you have the rest will it be all of it or more install payments um it do you know how hard it was to find this little bit uh it'll yes be an install yeah so it'll be an install payments i'm working on you know the seat of my pants here no resources to find it so okay give us another two weeks and we'll get you <laughs> <laughs> if you finish it all, I give you a week. If you make installs, I give you three days. Uh, he will whistle for a couple of, uh, you see a couple of just rank and file Durgar run in from the outside, and I, I'm not going to move them. But they come up and they get, they, they kind of rush toward the door and you hear like the tensioning of bowstrings up on the wall like they are the archers are at the ready and the the, the they kind of slow down they don't have any arms in there they're in they any arms they don't have any weapons in their hands <laughs> and they they come up and get the um pick up the cart or pick up the, the handles to the cart and they look at carcam and then they look at you Three days. Each installment three days. And so they will. So you're you're giving them the okay to take it. Yeah. 
Okay, they will begin to... I'm just going to move it to here because I can't do it under the bridge there. <laughs> They're going to move it to there. Um, Carcam will, will come back over to you. If you make a bigger payment, it can be more than three days. This doesn't... You're the first one I feel like that isn't... Sex, sexing me, screwing me. You're the first one I feel isn't screwing me. I don't, I don't like you, but I don't not like you. God uh, damn, you roll twenty. I like you. Uh, here, here, Carker, let, let me, let me, let me walk you out. Let's collaborate a little bit as we walk out here. Um, I'm gonna like, off, like open my hand up to uh, uh, Zilvana. Mm -hmm. So she can take my arm and, and walk up with me. Ah, Dang. yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, as the two of you approach him, his, his entourage gets, they bristle a little bit, like not super sure. Oh, no, I'm taking her arm like we're a prom couple. Right, but you have both okay. approached Karkam, though. Is he not standing by me? He is, but Zelvana, Zelvana has come into the mix, and now they, mm -hmm. they just aren't sure. They don't... You notice you haven't seen any female Durgar. You feel like this is one of those weird societies where, like, the women aren't worthy to be out in the field doing stuff, so... Very, it's, very, it's very Klingon, in a way. So... It, um... But they, like, when the two of you... When, when she kind of joins in, they do bristle just a little bit. Um, kind of not knowing what's happening. Well, that's uh, fine. They can it, start yeah, with it, it, it's all no, no, no. It, this is cool. This is just a, a dear, dear friend of mine. I've had her hand. Hmm. Are you wife, Mrs. Wife? He's a little bit like Crewfield, just not quite as disarmingly <laughs> charming. Uh, you imagine he is like fleshy and wet under the, all that armor, but <laughs> he's not as as charming. I am I am friend and companion. Mm. So, do you think you can have something larger than fifty pounds? I, I could give I could give you more than three days if it was more than fifty pounds. Give me the three days for the 50 you, pounds. Just, you, just you, you realize he's kind of talking hush. He, you know his entourage does not speak common, but yeah. he's definitely kind of hush talking. Roll an, roll an insight check. Maybe both of you, of Zalvana and Flynn, roll an insight. <laughs> Sorry, I rolled a Ooh. 17 plus, uh, plus three, so I'm 20. Insight, that's a, uh, I don't want to upstate you. That's a 22. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> so I got a 20. For, for all that you that you know about Durgar and their underhanded ways, for one to have spent a little bit of time or enough time to learn some common and then looking at his posture, how he's trying to deal with you without his entourage knowing what's happening. He may be actually trying to not, not, be friends or extend an olive branch, but he he seems like he's a little bit on the up and up of if you work with me, I can I can do better for you. So the 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 feel that you get off of him with that is he is genuinely trying to if you can get him more than 50 pounds, you can have more than three days. We'll take the three days. With what I've got, I that's the best I can I can do for you right now. Understood. It's it has been pleasure. Somehow he's a little bit Russian as well. Um, <laughs> it has been pleasure. Professor, you notice Valin looking at you and looking out in the field and looking at you and looking out in the field. 
Um, how close is she? She's on the other tower from you. Probably too far. I can't telepathy that far. I think it's got to be within 30 feet. Can I just like give her like a, a shrug? Like, like what? And she's, she's going to point down at the cart and you see it is perilously, perilously close to where Flynn wanted the trigger. Oh, God. Um, have, have Flynn and Zalvan, oh. Uh. Karkan is still talking to them inside. They're inside. Oh. Valen's gonna, we... Valen's gonna reach in her coat and she's gonna pull out a wand and she's gonna look at you, Professor. Uh, I mean, I'll just shake, shake my head, like, like, yeah. <laughs> So, Professor and Delphina, you uh, you watch Valen take this wand and swing it, and three bright darts, darts of light, shoot out of the end of it. I'm going to add to that something I've never done. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to Eldritch Blast. Ooh. I like I've got, it. I've got my dark shard amulet, amulet, which lets me cast a cantrip that I don't actually know, but I have to make a arcana check first. Oh, okay, that's a natural nineteen on the arcana check, so I can I can cast the uh, the cantrip. So I'll see her go, and I'm like, uh, shoot, and I'll just bow bow. So since it is a large barely moving target with no dexterity. Let's say that for the purposes of a spell to hit, let's say that it has an AC of like 10. Okay. Well so, then I just need to roll not natural one and I'll be good. I rolled a two, but that's still a total of 10. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Is that just one bla one, one bolt? I, I rolled a, a two and a 17. Oh, okay. So, Flynn, you are trying your damnedest to get this guy out the door to enact the plan. And you're looking kind of past him through the gate. And you see these three. What does your blast look like, Professor? Oh, geez. Uh, it's just dark purple energy. I think I think it probably. No, it, I mean, I would I would direct it with my with my finger. Okay. Just this dark purple energy. You see these three, Flynn, these three white darts, and then these two purple darts stream down from what must be the towers. How fast can I draw on the Durgar? Well, let's see. Uh, please roll the damage on... We have to resolve that part first. Yeah. So I believe a standard Eldritch Blast does not add my ability modifier. So it's just 2d10. So I got a 2 and a 10, so 12 damage. Um, okay. So the you watch kind of kind of all of you at this point. So the three of you that are up top and the ones of you downstairs can, that can see through the gate, these five energies come down and hit the bags. And as they hit, everything seems to slow down to an almost stop. And that is where we're going to take our break. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> yep, I knew it. Hey. I absolutely knew it. I wasn't ready, but... Yeah. Good job. Good job. Speaking of heating up, the situation here <laughs> in Targos with the Durgar has uh, just crossed the line from semi-friendly, where Flynn was kind of on the edge of making a deal with the Durgar to maybe get a little time to think about things, to Valin and the Professor setting in motion a potential chain of events 
But as I told Flynn, this thing has not exploded yet. Oh, that's not good. Because uh, <laughs> I, because I can only do that once. <laughs> well. <laughs> As the three magic missiles hit and the two Eldritch Blasts hit, everything seems to slow down to an almost stop. The spells hit. You can hear the, the boom and watch the wagon's wheels buckle under the magic. Nothing else immediately occurs. It seems as though the plan has not worked. Plan works. Plan always works. Even when it doesn't work, it still works. A heartbeat. You see some sparks crack off in the bag, in one of the bags, and a fireball erupts. Oh, sorry, adjusting the map here for everyone to see. Um, this fireball, it, it looks even nastier than one normally looks. It's, it is just, if a fireball could be angry, it has the look of an angry fireball. Another heartbeat. And the fireball blooms. Oh no! Oh my god! <laughs> 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 and, <clears throat> oh my it, god! In front of your eyes, it just becomes larger, and your eyes are starting to water from the the brightness of the light and the heat that is kind of just now beginning to reach you. The intense kind of pressure wave off of it. Another heartbeat. I, I love that in the midst of this, you guys are still measuring shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, uh, the heartbeat happens. And again, the no. fireball continues. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> continues to roil out. You. <laughs> There are mushrooms starting you, to form here. There, there is not, oh but remember God. that fireball is a sphere, and so this thing it, is huge. It has that second bloom, and uh, it is just an, an unstoppable force, and it it engulfs it's even more Durgar, and you can see momentarily on their faces they're they're struggling to understand what is happening. You inhale. And the air is searingly hot and burns your lungs. It smells sharply of sulfur as the fireball that you have just unleashed becomes like the sun that has not been seen here in so very long. The noise is unimaginable as it goes from the crack of the initial spells hitting to the screams of pain and confusion to the roar of a hellish inferno and then suddenly to nothing. Everyone who is within line of sight, which is all of you, is blinded and deafened. Excellent. Oof. Lovely, lovely. Please. Ah! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, Please roll <laughs> for initiative. Oh, fodder nutter. I can't click my token, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <That's your> <laughs> it's all right. You just roll and I'll add them in there. Okay. All right. Uh, no, that, you know, so hold off on the initiative. I just, there's a couple of things I have to reset on the map here. And I should have told you to. I'll uh, click your tokens, but then I didn't. <laughs> um, please uh, talk amongst yourselves about the horrific 
things that you have done to... <laughs> I was fucking huge. Yeah, hey, was... that that worked. That was Swimmingly. the spot, too. If it already it that, been that nose. a little sooner, mm. we got the wall, too. Oh, my God, guys. I mean, you're not wrong, dude. It uh, It's kind of like the, the perfect spot for it. Um, oh, yeah, I don't need the cart anymore. No, oh, no. <laughs> Cart's gone. <laughs> oh, man, so oh. much. I wish I had made these guys into a group. Uh, I mean, not that anything is happening. There was a spot leading up to this week where I, I was like, shoot, like, do we even know if fire is effective against Durgar? But then I remembered, I think, I think... Velen had hit them with a fireball before. Oh yeah, yeah. You know she, uh, she so, had she had busted them pretty. I just I couldn't imagine hard. like doing all of this and like this massive fireball and then and then <laughs> oh <laughs> by the way Durgar me the fire don't. It actually heals them. Yeah, <laughs> makes them stronger. If Damn you're, it! They love fire. If you're just joining <laughs> us, I'm I'm resetting some things on the map after the crew just did a massive massive. Fireball. Uh, all right, I'm about to. Uh, Every time, sorry. Z's Every got, time. Z's got some, some wisdom oh, okay. in here. Okay, all right. Um. Doesn't. Reveal areas. That's okay. I am. Oh no! Oh no! Uh, ah, I found it. Thank you. Uh, an hour ago, Manx for the hundred bits, and thank you, White Knight to Queen for three hundred bits. Um. Snap. No, Z's a genius. Yes, we. Anyway, uh, you can highlight. Amazing. You can highlight the map and find it in the dark. But yes, hey, now, now please, please click your, uh, click your tokens and roll. If none of you can see yet, so disregard anything that you are seeing on here, please. Yeah, that's fine. I zoomed all the way out anyway. We are very close to hype train. So if, anyone, if anyone's you. sitting on a sitting on a, a, a subscription renewal or anything like that, just I mean, just throwing out throwing it out there. Who wants a free Prezi? Hiya. Free Prezi on the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not only close yeah. to hype train. One just choo. kicked off. And choo -choo, y'all. Choo choo. And so that means I gotta hit that hype train button. Um Alright, is that everyone rolled in? Yes. Sweet. Uh all of our people, it looks like we all got Nat 20s. You know, unfortunately, <laughs> I don't see that being true. I think it's a roll twenty glitch, and we need you to go <laughs> in and just fix that. You know what? I'll, I'll I will be the first one to grab about roll twenty glitches, but this ain't one of them. <laughs> I tried. Uh, you again. did. You did. It wasn't a good try, but you did. Um. Oh, I have to add a couple of turns here. Turn. Silly Durgar. Where do Silly I end? Durgar. Tricks are for kids, right? That's exactly the vibe I was going for. Oh, Thank I, you. I, I don't remember where I add a turn from. One. Not tricks, but I did grab some Fruit Loops to snack on. Mm. Um, You know what? Let me reset the turn order. I, I don't... I cannot find where I add a turn, so we're just gonna just gonna do it in post. Uh, so again, remember you are currently deafened and blinded, so you will not see anything that is taking place at the moment. Savvy? Words. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so the uh, you don't hear a Durgar cry out uh, at the murder of all of his people and use his bonus action. 
Uh, on action 20, which is not on the turn order, is um, actually the lair action, which is the archers get to fire twice, but they are currently massaging their sore eyes and burning ears. So they will not take an action this turn. Um, uh, I just skipped you, Luca, but it, it is your turn. Uh, you can do anything that you want to do that doesn't require sight or sound. I mean, I'm going to pull out <laughs> my bow. I'm going to ready some arrows. And that's pretty much it because I can't see anything. I can't hear anything. I can try and shoot down, downrange, but... You I could. You got a lot of your own. May not hit. Yeah, my people. You got a lot of your homies uh, downrange. And I do owe Flynn another stab, but I don't think now is the time for the stabbing. So I will just slowly move on to three. up there at least. So I'm progressing, and that's my turn. Until okay. I can actually see and or hear something. I'm, I'm not really going to do a whole lot. Yep, I'm, uh, I just remembered how I can add a turn in. Jesus, there's a lot going on here. Uh, all right, Flynn. Um, I'm going to... Bro, I can't see, I can't hear, um, but what I can do yes. is um, uh, use telepathy. Um, what are you doing? You can't be there. You're dead. What? I'm, I'm talking to a... There's one guy <laughs> left in the in the midst of the destruction. Like, Oof, what happened? I was he pretending not to notice him, and I was like, "Oh shoot! I found the, found the BBEG guy." <laughs> yeah, well, he's, he's thinking. Uh, um. Uh, yeah. Uh, if I could, if I can target the troops and just tell them, "Hold, wait till you you come to your senses." Okay. Well, oh, that's yeah. it's it, so are you using your action for that, because remember that a legendary action comes at the end of someone else's turn. Oh, OK. Um, then I will. Because I'll just use it as like a, by speaking. If I'm, I'll just tell one person, I'll tell Grendel. Um, uh, m when you can see, move them out. Um, so, you know what? You know, what's funny. He's deaf. Grendel? Everyone that was in sight of that is blinded and deafened. I'm oh, you're telepathy. Telepathic, yes. Gotcha. That's different than telling. <laughs> telepathy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I'm with you. I'm with you now. <laughs> yes, he's mind deaf. Anything else for you, Flynn? <laughs> I'm like, in his head? <laughs> brain, brain deaf. <laughs> um, and I am going to reach out a hand in front of me to look for uh, Krakum. Karakum. Kar Karkam? Kar okay. Karkum. Kar sure. You're going to try to grapple on him? I'm going to try and find him. Just find yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah, just find him. Just find him. If you're just going to try to find him, you know that he had been right in front, and so you you reach out and you feel Zalvana, and you can reach right in between and, and just locate him. I'm not going to make you roll for that. Okay. Um, we did complete a level one hype train, though. Thank you, everybody, for that. That's whoop, whoop, whoop. White Knight to Queen for 300 bits, Alias Prime X for one sub, Chail88 for one sub. Um, that means we're going to add a, a second drawing at the end for a, another $5 to crackandice.com. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you, you for sure can find him. Okay, yeah, and I'm just gonna lay a hand on him. Okay, not um, try, not try to grapple, just try to touch him. No, I'm gonna grapple him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, make a uh, make an athletics check, please.
19. Oof, he only rolled a 16 to slip it. Ah, that was uh, terrifying, because I'm a dex build, not a strength build. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you, you got a hold of him for sure. You, anything you want to do or, uh, I mean, um, remembering that your group precipitated these actions, but yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Oh yes. I am now very sympathetic for this Durgar. I <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's I did. Good. I did not give the word. <laughs> um, that's, uh, yeah, that's going to be it. That's going to be it for me. Zalvana. Can I heal myself at all? Sure. Are you like, Are you like, down? Could I, no, I mean, like, could I heal myself and to be able to see and hear again? Oh, to get rid of the conditions. Uh, yeah. Heals won't do that. There, I've, there are some spells that will get rid of conditions. I'm sure that Z will beat me to them in the chat. Uh, mm -hmm. I cannot... Uh, tell you off the top of my head what cures the conditions. But if okay. I just keep vamping, I'm sure he'll jump in here. <laughs> um, uh, lesser restoration would do that. But <laughs> Okay, I don't have that. Okay. Um, um, all right, so I'm going to draw my sword. Oh, it's actually lesser resto one per cast. So you have to cast it twice to get rid of both of them. Ah. Um, all right, I'm just going to... I'm going to I'm going to pull out my sword and um just wait okay maybe stand and stand up I don't know if I'm if I fell down because I couldn't see or hear No 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 but, you're 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 still you're an adventurer you're pretty badass Okay okay uh, so. anything else for you Uh not at this point Okay Uh this guy is going to go Delphina. Uh, I so I was trying to plot. You interrupted my plotting. How dare! <laughs> How much dare? <laughs> How very dare! So there's one of the Durgar and Professor on deck. So please plan accordingly. I'm sorry I didn't no. give you proper time, <laughs> Delphina, to plan. Can I use? Did Zeke say I can use cure wounds to, nope. to get rid of? Damn nope. it! Damn it! Less, damn it! Lesser resto and one condition per cast. Mm -hmm. And at level five, you don't have lesser resto yet. I don't think. Okay, I am going to summon my spiritual weapon so okay. that I at least have it. Mm -hmm. And being blinded and deafened, that is all I can do. Uh, where are you going to summon it to? Uh, currently going to keep, mm, well, I'm blind and deaf, so I'm going to just have it right next to me. Okay. Are you going to drag it on? Or are you going to make me drag it on? I hit random. I'll, I'll drag it on. I hit random buttons. I'm just trying to hit cast in. Stop it. Oh, just to mark the spell is used. Yes. <laughs> well, she's cast it twice now. No. <laughs> no. Three, three spell slots. Uh, no. <laughs> all right. Anything else for you? Uh, that is it. Currently, that's all I can do. Okay, Professor. Um, yeah, I can't see. Can I still use uh, verbal components of spells? Sure. You're not silenced. You're just deafened. So. Yeah. It might sound a little wonky, <laughs> but. <laughs> No one but no one will hear you, so. <laughs> um, I mean, all I can do right now, I'm just going to produce flame and just launch it straight south off the wall, like 30 feet. Okay. Hoping to hit something. Okay. Yeah, do it up, man. Um, I'm going to roll an attack. <laughs> uh, with disadvantage for being blind, that's a natural one. Uh, <laughs> so I just hit the wall. You know, right you know yeah, I mean, you face. you give it the gusto and throw it, and like immediately thereafter, you're like, yeah, I got somebody. Like, or is that an is that one of the archers burning? I can I can I can smell something. I didn't hear it though. 
Yeah, I mean, like, you, the person next to you, you can feel them, like... Uh, anything else for you, sir? Oh, no, that was perfect. Love it. Um, Flynn, so you're going to notice that what you, oh, had, a, what you had a hold of suddenly gets bigger in your hand. Yeah, but I'm holding the Durgar. I know. No, I was making a joke. No, I know. <laughs> and, it, <laughs> and it gets to be twice the size than it was when you started holding it. I'm riding this elevator up then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I'm, I'm going to let go now. No. <laughs> I'm going to say just for the, because I think it's amusing to me that you're still holding on, but just know that it, it's going to look a little weird here in, in a minute when you get your sight back. Um, Valin is going to scream about how cool that was and how good she was with the magic missile. Uh, <laughs> the Targos guards are not going to do anything. The Durgar are not going to do anything. And now we're back to the top of the order. And... Flynn, I need you to tell me. Oh, I don't need you. I know what your AC is. Uh, you feel just a, uh, it obviously is a blade to come down just whoosh, right, right past you. You don't see it or hear it yet, but you feel what is absolutely a blade just whiz past you. Um, but it misses. Luca, you you uh, shake just a little bit and your eyes clear and your hearing, it kind of starts to come back to you a bit and you are no longer blinded and deafened. Um, and you look and see the, the five Durgar that are in here with you are now much larger than they were um, and two of them are kind of right on top of Flynn and Zavanna, and it looks like Flynn is holding on to one of them. You don't really know how that happened. All right, well, now that I can see things, uh, I'm going to fire two arrows at the one Flynn is holding on to, at, hugging, I really so, can't tell. So he's holding on to Karkam Bone Sliver which is this guy. Yeah, so that'll be the one I'm attacking. Okay. But from Luca's perspective, you're hugging him? What? Why are you hugging him? For sure. Yeah, man. Do it up. 17 for the first one? Ah, contest. So remember that in my games, it's meat to beat is silly. So his AC is 17. You rolled a 17. So you and I do rollies. Just straight D20, and we see who wins. Okay, okay. I rolled an 11. I rolled a 13. Yeah, so you you managed to just kind of find the 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 piece between the the arm and the chest uh and and sink one home. So please roll the attack. Or please the attack. Please roll the damage. So 5 points of piercing damage, 1 point of cold damage. Mm -hmm. And then for the second attack, Oh, it's a 13. That one's not going to hit. Uh, yeah, the second one, it just ping, and kind of zings off of his uh, off his plate. Uh, anything else for you, sir? No, that'll be it for me. All right. It is lair, number 20, lair action. So the the archers manage to kind of shake and, and, and clear their heads a little bit. And Luca, you hear immediately the sound of 40 arrows just out into kind of the front yard um, get loosed. Flynn, your your vision, your hearing both kind of clear up. Uh, Karkam is twice the size that he once was. He is now a large creature, having used enlarge. 
the uh, one of the soul blades has run up on you, and no doubt that is who swung and missed. The other three that are in here with you are also much embiggened. Um, Karkam, there's a, a little bit of blood kind of running out from a, a, the, the crack in his armor here between the arm and the, and the chest plate. And you see Luca behind you with his bow drawn. Um, how high up off the ground am I? You're not off the ground, but so you, you kind of had a hold of him. And then when he got larger, so you're kind of holding on to him, but you're, you're kind of at full extension oh, okay. like this. Um, cool. I'm going to draw swords. Okay. And take some, take some swing swings. Mm-hmm. Swing it up, baby. Uh, because if I was, gonna, if I was going to be in the air, I was going to take out my hand axes and use them like, <laughs> I got to say, I don't hate that idea either, but <laughs> These are my ladies. This is Knox. Or this is Luna. Okay, for so a 26 on the first one, which is a, definitely a hit. And a 21 on the second one, which is definitely a hit. Please roll damage for both of those. Oof, 11 piercing. And 7 piercing for a total of 18. A mighty, mighty pair of blows. Um... Yeah, he looks he looks not super kind of out of the gate. Um Yeah, I think that's all I got. Uh oh. Yep. Okay. Zavana, you uh the, yep. the the sight comes back, the ears clear. Big ass everything I said before, just watch the VOD. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. I got, Immersion, I, y'all. <laughs> I got my frostbrand rapier out. I'm going to use it. So, who are you attacking? Um, who are you attacking? Um, I Carcam or to... the Soul Blade that's right next to you. Oh, the Soul Blade. Soul Blade. Okay. Ugh. All right. Um, will a 16 hit? Absolutely. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Um, right. So 1d6, no, 1d8 plus 3. So much measuring happening. I know. Um, sorry. And I don't even, I don't even have the screen on the battle part. So that's 10. Such an asshole. Plus, plus another, uh, 1d6 of ice damage. Okay. So... Six. Uh, so that's 16 damage. Yeah, he, uh, again, another mighty blow struck, and he suddenly is, is not maybe looking as good as he had hoped he would look today. Uh, what else for you? Um, all right, so who's next? Who's next? Who's next? Delphina. Um, she's good. Um... All right, I'm shit. Um, I'm. I think that's it for right now. Okay. Yeah. This soul blade will. Uh, it's actually gonna run to the side and take some swings on. Some guards. That's a hit. And that's a hit. Uh, two, 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 three. Uh, one of these guards you can see looks mightily wounded. Um, I'm going to give him a little lightning bolt there. Um, and that finishes, and he lets out just a, a, a huge roar for no real reason. Um, 
that's going to complete him. Delphina, you can see, you can hear uh, the, you know, it's shit's just getting real all over the place. All right. I can see. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cast at the first level Bliss. I'm going to hit Prof Reginald and the two archers next to him. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm just going to yell. And Bless adds of... an additional 1d4. Yeah. You, you popped yes. it up for me. Yep. Yes. To attack yes. rolls or saving throws. Got it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. What, what were you going to say when you cast it? I I'm, I cut you off. I apologize. You, nope. You are good. In the name of Eldith, I bless you. It's not stolen from anything. Uh, then... I am going to send my beautiful spiritual weapon to Mr. Orange here. How far can he go? 60 feet. Are you sure about that? It says 30. 60 feet. 60 feet. Cast, 60 feet. Range. Casting 60 feet. each yeah. round, your spiritual weapon can move 20 feet. Okay. Well, my feet move 30. So hold on. Change plans. Whoop. Okay. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Man, just when I think I'm so smart and I have a plan. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I can move 30 feet, so I need to go right here next to these archers. Okay. Long spiritual weapon. Uh, and he doesn't move with you. Uh-huh. Or he can move 20 feet. It's not like he's hooked I to your belt. Can... Okay. Yeah, he can come at most to here by to this archer. here. Okay, uh, the, uh, I'll do that because I think they're going to need my help with the giant dudes more okay. than the wall right now. Okay. And I believe that is all I can do on my turn currently. Uh, all right. Cast a spell. Yeah, I think I'm good. Another one of these. Uh, Durgar is going to kind of muscle in here. A little bit, and I will say that Zavanna and uh, Flynn and Luca and probably Delfina for sure can all see that he uh, he takes his his long lance and he swings it around and he points it and issuing forth from the end of it is a 15 foot cone of fire targeting all three of these units here. Uh, and so they each have to make dexterity saves. Uh, ooh, and two of them actually make it. So this guy, this pair here has failed. Uh, these other two have made it. And they will take damage accordingly. We're also going to mark him as damaged. Uh, he also, for no apparent reason, lets out a mighty roar. Uh, and that's what he's going to do for the moment. Professor. It's the Durgar who are making a mighty roar? Yeah. I don't like it. It's unsettling. Um, yeah, so I'm going to move me over to here. <clears throat> okay. Should put me within 60 feet of Karkum. Yes. Flynn's been hitting Karkum, right? I have no idea. Yeah. Well, you you can see that he he is is definitely like not he's a little bit hobbled. Um you don't know who's been hitting him, but somebody in there has been fucking him up. Okay. Um I'm going to mind sliver. Mm. That guy. I need a intelligence save. Oh, this is going to go well. Oh, he has plus one. Uh, that's a dirty 20. Okay. Uh. No, he's good. Uh, you do, Flynn, see him like kind of shake something out of his head and you're not exactly sure what, what has happened, but he seems to have, uh, have made it. Uh... uh. Bummer. Oh, what I meant to do last turn is say, hey, Krufiel, are you around? 
uh, uh, yes, I am Knufio, the professor. Holy shit, what is going on? Yeah. <laughs> so that, yeah. Are you blind to two? Can you see? Uh, uh, uh yes, I, I can see very well, Master. All right. Well, great. Well, you just sit tight. Uh, why don't you go fly over to the wall over, I don't know, around there. No, I'm on, I'm on the wrong thing. I don't know, over that way. Go fly over there. And uh, just uh, sit tight, invisibly, and be ready to follow. As you wish. But master. also, also let me know when you are leaving, because you're invisible. I won't. I won't see you go. Uh, yes, absolutely. All right. Appreciate it. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Professor? No, that's it. All right. This other mean guy is actually going to run up and just try to fucking trample over those guys there. Yeah, he's not super as good as at that as he thought he was. So he tries to just bowl them over like pins, but what he really kind of does is ends up wedging himself between Carcam and the guard. So they're all just a a tight, tight package right now, and so tight that he cannot get a weapon attack off on them. But it's it's prime time for a fireball now. If anybody has one. Ooh. Well. Oh, now it is Carcam's turn. Carcam. Carcam. All right. Um, Flynn, feeling betrayed by you, he is going to make two attacks against you. One of them is a 13. Doesn't hit. One of them is a 22. Doesn't hit. <laughs> How does a twenty-two not hit you? Uh, it's a joke. I, I just... <laughs> oh, I, I thought you. I, I thought you just had something that I didn't realize you had, and I was like, "What am I gonna have? Uh, what am uh, I gonna have toast. to take away from him?" Uh, okay, so incoming. You're gonna take uh, eight bludgeoning damage. And seven psychic damage. Uh, I will use my reaction um, to use a protective shield. That was called. Um, what's it called? Do, 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 do. I don't know. Protective shield. Okay. What? Well, tell me what that does. Um, I roll a. Ooh, I roll a d8 and um. It's less whatever I roll. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so roll that D eight and tell me what it's less what it's lessened by. Four. Uh okay. So does that lessen the psychic damage or the bludgeoning damage? Uh I'm pretty sure it's just the physical. Okay. You and other creatures can take damage, you can die. That doesn't Okay, I mean it doesn't matter. It's, it, it, okay. As long as you're not resistant to one of them, it, it's 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 all just a big damage bucket at this point, so. Right. Um so then that is mm -hmm. it was eight, but it was fifteen, so it's eleven points of damage to you. Alright. Um He will also he will yell something in in uh in Dwarvish or maybe in Undercommon, you're not really sure. And the the two soul blades and the guy, the other big guy that's up next to him, are all able to use their reaction to make an attack right now. Oh God! So the soul blade that's up next to you, Flynn, <laughs> like smooth moves past you, like between you and Zelvana, couldn't have been placed better. Um, 
Uh, god damn. Yeah, the other two don't do shit either. Way to waste your moves, guys. <laughs> yes. Um. Gosh, I want to move, but there's so many AOs. I think he's going to stick it out. Um. Valen's just going to, you can hear her kind of calling out to some of the archers up there, but you can't hear what she's saying. Uh, all right, so now Russell and Grendel, their vision and sight has come back. So, Flynn, unless you... Now would be where your your allies kind of start to come into some some usefulness here. Um, at the end of Valen's turn, if you have a countermanding order, you can provide it. Okay. Or you can let them take some some people and go. Uh, I'll let him take some people and go because we've got nobody in front. Okay. Right now. So, just for the ease, I'm going to take these packages that are in the back. It's just way easier for me to grab them. And you know what? I know it's more than 30 feet. Don't at me about it. <laughs> um... They're going to get out and have to immediately break right and left. And a couple of these guys don't make it. And you see them just slip down. And when you really look out there, this area that I've marked on the field is a, a best. Best you could describe it would be a crater of ice. Um, it looks to be five or six feet deep in the center. Um, it is absolutely difficult terrain, and, uh, two of your guys have slipped into it. <laughs> uh, shit, 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 shit happens, you know? Like, that's a, that's a concave bowl? You mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Kind of like when the Terminator shows up and, like, it eats out of things, so. Um, <laughs> the, uh... Durgar, you, you hear some rallying cries out front. Um, but no one's super watching what's going on out there at the moment. Top of the order. Oh, God, this motherfucker. Who is drawing? <laughs> oh, it's Zelvana. <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if everyone kept, on the stream... I don't know if everyone on the stream can see <laughs> this, but so much. this is the most important thing... <laughs> Happening at the moment as the lives of the citizens of Targos hang in the balance. I can't this, get rid of it. I've been trying it. I don't know how. I can't do it. I'm sorry. It's really making me. I'm sorry. I'm fine. Everything's fine. Oh my god. I, oh no. I, oh, okay, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when I don't know what to do with things? And I'm, okay, that's a, you, fine. you remember earlier when Flynn put the hula hoop in? Uh, yeah, right in the yep. middle, right in the middle yep. of what was going on. <laughs> that's how we keep it interesting. That's how yeah. we keep it interesting. All right, uh, Flynn, this guy is—you see him like issue a prayer to whatever dark being he pseudo worships, and he looks at the soul blade in his hand. And he looks at you, and he just—you can almost hear him say. Please, Jesus, just let me hit him one <laughs> time. <laughs> Smooth like butter. Uh, and he's actually going to pull away from you. To, he's going to pull all the way out to the door. You oh get God. an AO. Actually, you and Zalvana <laughs> both, if you'd like, get an attack of opportunity on him. So. Hell yeah. I, I hate to say it, but Flynn, I, you've used your reaction already. Oh, damn. Oh, yeah. So yeah, for the, yeah. the other thing. So, Zavana, you could make an attack of opportunity <laughs> on him. So, like, I could run up on him and, like, stab him? Is that what as, you're saying? As he's leaving your combat zone, you can reach out and make a strike with your reaction. You don't have to move at all. And if you don't use the uh, reaction, you lose it, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would like to, I would like to, like, can I stab him? Or does it have to be a grapple sort of situation? No, yeah, it has to be a weapon attack. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you can swing that tasty frost brand at him for sure. I want to. I want to definitely swing that tasty frost brand. Do I need to roll for? Roll, yeah, roll to, to hit. See if it hits him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I ain't gonna just. I ain't gonna just give <laughs> oh, it to you. Oh no! 
Oh no, it didn't hit. It's a nine. That is a nine. Oh, that is, he has a low AC, but it's not that low. Oh, oh shit. Was that, that's a God. nine with your plus to hit? It's, yeah, yeah, I rolled a three. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow, okay. First time Kraken's let me down. <laughs> Oh, Kraken! She didn't, she didn't mean it. She didn't mean it, Kraken. She didn't mean it. Great, no, man. She didn't. The, the great dice. Hold on, hold on. I just want to see. What would it have been? <laughs> it would have been a twenty-four. <laughs> That's not real. But it was not. Yeah, um, it's not real. Yeah. So, so he yeah. he sees you smooth miss him like he's been smooth missing Flynn all day. Yeah. Sorry. Luca. All right, so there's all sorts of shenanigans happening here. Um, what would you like thing, to get into? First thing I'll do is I will shoot my arrow at Karkim again, mm -hmm. and then we'll go from there. Okay, I love uh, it. That is a damn a fifteen. Okay, fifteen misses. Then I will run up here. And with my second attack, 30 foot line, cold damage the, for my icy, frosty breath coming forward from me. Okay, so you're trying to pick up Carcam, the Soul Blade, and this one big dude in the back? Yeah, and I was, since their tokens are overlapping, I was going to try and get the guy over here as well, but I understand if that's not how the tokens are. You used. can do that if you want to imperil the Targos guards that he is overlapping. So uh, depends on what flavor murder hobo you want to go with. Oh, I'll I'll kill the two guards. It's fine. <laughs> They're alive for Targos today. Uh, all right. Yeah. So that is that Dex Dex saves. Uh, Dex fourteen. Yep. Okay, the Targos guards actually make it, so that's going to be half damage, I'm guessing. Yep. Uh, the guy in the back and the Soul Blade make their save. And so you're trying to get Karkam and the other, this other guy as well, yeah? Yeah, I'm trying. If I can, I'd like to get them all. Uh, you can get three of them. You just have to choose which three. You can get Carcam, the Soul Blade, and then either this guy or this guy. I will get this guy then because that's not the back. The guy in the back. As, yeah, that's not okay. getting as many Targos guards. Okay. Um, and oof, yeah. and Carcam fails to save. All right, so what's What's the full and the half on the damage? The full is eight. The half is four. Yeah, they are not not loving having taken any of that. Um, and the guards behind him are a little frosty damaged, but OK. Uh, all right. What else for you, sir? Uh, do, 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 bonus actions. Uh, I, I don't have, I'll do the thing. I'll do the thing and that'll be my turn. Okay. With my bonus action. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Oh, um, <laughs> well, I was just doing the first part of it. I wasn't doing the oh, whole thing. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, you can about. you can just do the first part of it. That's fine. And we'll do the second part on your next turn. Yeah. Secret, secret. Uh, all right. Lair action 20. Again, now you all hear the bowstrings tighten. And just a flurry of arrows. Um and you guys can't for sure see what's happening. Um, but things out front are definitely going on. Um, 
Flynn. Yes. What would you like to do? Um, I'm going to attack Harkham again. I figured you would. <laughs> Press the moon. Oh. Oof. All right, let's try a second. So that uh, 17 is a Rollies. Me okay. and you. I rolled a Kraken. Oh. Oh, you're doing the physical move. Well, that's not a Kraken. That's a nine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to action surge. Yeah, love it. Love it. <laughs> Get him. 23 hits. All right. Damn, that's my bonus action. Okay. Uh... Yep, just gonna go with that. Can't put any sauce behind it. Okay. Uh, so, dude, he is not dead, but he's definitely like bleeding from just about every hole in his body, including the new ones that you and Luca and Zavanna have poked into him. Um, he's not doing. If you had to guess, you're not a doctor, but he's not doing <laughs> well. Uh, anything um, else for you, sir? I'm just going to look at him in, in uh, like, stone-cold serious face. Um, looking at him, like, leave, or I'll present your head to the rest of your troops. Uh, 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 uh. Anything else? Uh, the laugh, and just like, heads it is. And then <laughs> 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 um... Can, I can't command them this time, so no, I'm, I'm, good, I'm good. Okay. Zavana. Yeah, so um, I'm going to cast um, a Thunder Wave. Um, nice. I should be able to hit these three people. These three guys. I would here. I would say that that you are correct. Yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> and that's a con save? Yes, the Thunder Wave is a con save of 16. All right. So, Carcam fails. The Soul Blade uh, saves. And the other guy... Fails. All right, so two fails and a save. Tell me about that right. damage. All right, so this is this is a second level spell, so it's three d eight. Um, so we got five. We got three, so that's eight. We got four, so twelve. That's twelve. Oof. Okie dokie. Minus twelve. And. Minus 12. Minus. Oh, this is not looking good for the home team, boys. <laughs> and then you're minus six. Um, all of this kind of running together, <clears throat> Flynn, you you say what you say to him about, you know, call this off or I'll present your head to your troops. And you hear him laugh and... Just before Zalvana's thunder wave goes off, you hear him say, No more fish for Targos. No more economy for Targos. No more Targos. And then the thunder wave goes off. And Zalvana, why don't you tell me what it looks like when the thunder wave, the pressure j hits him? Um... So it's going to be like this eruption kind of coming from me and like you get like these like really cool like kind of like bluish sparks mm -hmm. coming from me and they just kind of like <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and uh yeah, the that will mark the end of Carcam Boneforge. I'd like to think that 
he shrinks back to regular size when that happens. Just because I think it's funny. Anything else on your turn, Zalvana? Um, I'm going to cast Bardic Inspiration to Flynn. Oh, what do you Thank say you. to inspire him? You're doing great, man. Let's just keep it up. And I, <laughs> I yeah, yeah, yeah. So do that, I roll? Do I roll it, or do, does he roll it? No, he 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 has it in reserve to use whenever he'd like. Got it. Cool. And remember, she's College of Valor Bard, so you can use that for damage, I believe. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, well, it's not going well for this guy's team. Um, but in a rage, he's going to come up here, and Zalvana, he's going to take a swing at you mm. since you just thundered him in the face hole. Uh, that's oh, nice. going to be... It's going to be a, a 17 to hit. Yeah, that hits. And he's like, thank the maker. <laughs> <clears throat> and he's going to just bring the hammer down with eight points of force damage. A two, a two, and a one. Whoa. Um. Yeah, it's like he finally hits and he rolls like crap for damage. Uh, but you still take eight points of force damage. Cool. Um, and then he's going to yell something in Undercommon, which none of you speak. So it's pointless to discuss. Grandal? Grandal, what uh, you say? <laughs> Grandal? He's, he's out front with the troops. He's trying to figure out how to fish those two guys out of the, out of the dish. Get them later. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's not. He's not. But they moved like 90 feet last round, so he's taking a breath. Uh, Delfina. Delmuta. Mm -hmm. Mutefina. I like to watch you. I like to watch you curse when I can't hear you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I do. It's just, but you're so like, you're so when sweet. So and then you. And it's just, it's like, oh, yeah, that's what she said. Not what I said. She's going to she's gonna pull a dog from the ether and throw it and onto throw the it. Durgar. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, as I was saying, I'm going to cast Guidance on this archer next to me. Okay. And come around here, and then I'm going to pull my feather as far as I can get her for now. Okay, sounds dirty. Oh yeah. <laughs> I can't wait till next round when you jump that feather off of the tower. Oh, I'm beating the shit out of somebody. Dude, I'm <laughs> I am here for it. I'm gonna keep him alive just so that can happen. Yes. <laughs> Slowly drag it. And I think that's all I can do. My bonus actions. I think I'm I think I'm good. Okay. So, this guy in the back, I gotta see, I hit my recharge. He is going to again bring his lance around. Doing oh that. shit, it's only 15 feet. 15. Shit, alright, he's gonna... God, can he get to there? He's going to move up and he's going to take the AOs and he's just going to get right here and shoot his 15 foot cone of fire, but, and try to hit Luca and Zalvana. Uh, so I need dex saves from both of you, please. That would be a dirty 20 for me. Hell yeah. Um, dex save, dex save. Do I have to do it on this thing, or can I just roll for it? I mean, if you know what your dex save is, you can just roll for it. If you know what your bonus to dex is. Okay. So I rolled a 15 plus 6, so that's 21. You have a plus 6 dex save? I think. Yeah. I have a plus 7, so I'm oh. not surprised. <laughs> I'm not surprised either. This is the look of someone who's not at all surprised. Yeah, hell yeah, you do. You're proficient in it. 
Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, all right, so you both take half damage. I'm uh, she, bendy. You uh, double mm. jointed with no gag reflex. You both take <laughs> five, five points of fire damage. Jesus. All right. I don't know that he needs to be invoked in this. Uh, <laughs> and that will finish him. Professor, still a good time for a fireball up there. Yeah, lots, I, lots wish of clumps. I knew some of those guys. <laughs> um, well, what's this range? That would be cool. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I was going to do something else, but I like this better. Okay, what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to raise this staff and launch a magnify gravity. Nice. Right right about there. To hit all three of them, or can you get all four in that? I don't think I can get all four. It's a 10-foot radius. So if I go here... Yeah, I think at best you can get three of them, because this would yeah. get those two guys and the other Soul Blade, but you'd miss on that one. So I think you, you yeah. just have to pick which three you want to hit. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get these three up here. Okay. With a magnifying gravity. Yeah, and that's a that's deck save as well. Yes. Con save. Ooh, con save. Con save. All right, so that's a two for the soul blade. Oh, well, yeah, because he has a plus zero. It's not much better for him. And uh, will the ten beat it? Nah. All right, so they... <laughs> They all three will take full damage. Why don't you tell me or tell everyone what that kind of looks like when you fire that magnify gravity? Yeah, so very similar to when you saw it last in the in the uh, in the barracks, it just kind of splits the air slightly, and just this black void like opens up and starts swirling, and just everything just gets pulled and drawn toward it, and just you can hear like crunching and compressing as they just get sucked into this ball of intense gravity. Nice. Love it. Fucking crunchy. Uh, <laughs> anything else for you, sir? Um, that's an action. I don't think I have any good bonus actions right now. Um, yeah, so I'm good. Uh, make sure to update these charges on that stuff. I did. Oh, wait. It's two charges, isn't it, for that? Mm. I'll fix it. I'll make it better. All right. He does not get his recharge. So, um, he's going to take a swipe at Luca, who has run up on him and seems to be challenging. <laughs> Damn you, Kraken! <laughs> uh, yeah. Nope, that's the one. So, oh no, woo. he uh he does not hit you. He that smooth slides by. It's gonna forget that happened. Uh, hey, why are you still on there? You're dead. Uh, Valen's still kind of pointing at best targets for everyone. Uh, all right, so now the Targos crew can move again. Ah, damn you, roll 20. I was still fine. <laughs> I love how these, like, back two groups of guards are just kind of standing in a line still like, what do we do? <laughs> There, you know what? I gave the commander two legendary actions each turn to command the troops with, which he has not used. I don't want to hear any guff about that. <laughs> Just getting these guys moved out a little bit so that I don't have to hear it from Luca. <laughs> Hmm. 
These guys are going to engage. Uh, any special orders, Captain? Uh, yeah. For the two columns that are back here? Uh, I'm going to say push them out and have them all rush. Um, are, are any now, of them still standing? Uh, are any of which still standing? Um, there are still four enemies there. So yeah, if you try to rush the columns through, they will... No, 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 no. Not rush through. Rush them. Rush them. Oof. Okay. Yeah. For sure, we can do that. Um, so we're going to say that the column on the left is going to come in. We're going to say that 40% of their attacks hit. Um... Yeah, so the this column on the left over here just bury this guy with damage. Uh, the column on the right is going to come in. You have no idea how hard it is to, to do this mass combat stuff. I found like 600 different sets of rules that all Jeez. just are bullshit. <laughs> um, they, okay, they didn't do quite as well. Still got some hits in. Um, oh, yeah, but you know what? It's enough that they fucking load him up. Because he only had three hit points left. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, so you can imagine they're not in this column line anymore. They have... They've moved and are surrounded, but... I don't want to clutter things any more than they already are, so... Why are you on the roof? Um, <laughs> and then the this Durgar man. It's also really difficult to manage the uh, the outside battle. Just yep. things are things are happening why, out there. Why are they doing that? <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> th things are happening out there. Uh, the archers aren't saying, oh crap, so you can you feel like it's okay outside for the moment. Um, this guy... Is gonna try to make it out. We're gonna say he actually does make it out. right into the fucking bowl. God damn it. Get him, guys. Get him while he slides in. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's going to be a thing now. That him, the three of them sliding around in some sort of weird slick it, kind weird, of thing. Weird slickness. Battle arena bowl. Yeah. Uh, it's ice hockey. That's all it is. Luca. Cargo's bowl. So, 2022. We invented a sport, a commemorative sport for the Battle of Targos. Sorry, Luca, it is your your turn. And so uh, you had started something, but I will allow if you'd like to not finish. It's up to you. Oh. Jesus. Uh, uh, no, I, I won't do it. I'm just going to pull back my bow and you guys now being up close enough to see what's actually going on. The tips of my arrows are growing this like shard of ice on it before I release each one. Uh, so the first one on Mr. Orange is going to be uh, do, 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 a 28 to hit. <laughs> yeah, like for real, though. Oof. Uh, and then the second one will be a natural 20. Oh. Oh. So for the first one. Uh-huh. Is 12 points of normal damage and three points of cold damage for that arrow. And then. So yeah, before okay, you, the... before you continue. Yes. With that crit. Why don't you tell me 
how the first arrow kills him, and then you can tell me how your crit over damage defiles his body. <laughs> the the first one would have gone through his throat into the backside, and he's just kind of like. And then the next one, I'll roll damage real fast to see how badly this is. Uh, six points of cold damage. 17 points of normal damage. The next arrow goes through his eye. And you guys see, like, the ice just kind of forming up and just cracks his head open through his helmet. If he is wearing a helmet, it looks like it was in the picture there. Before he just koosh. I think that's just his dome. Then yes, his dome cracks <laughs> open with all the ice expanding across his brain as it's being frozen. And what's weird is the piece that got blown off the back stays enlarged, but then his body shrinks down. So you're like, this this doesn't fit. Mm. That's gross. That's gross. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I hate that. Uh, any any other atrocities you'd like to? Well, with my bonus action, um, I'll just bite my hands um, to make the ice grow on my fingertips and deal one point of damage to myself this time around. Where was that earlier today? <laughs> I would have been throwing daggers and darts with cold damage on them earlier. But that is my turn. Uh, nope, that's a lie. That's a lie. I'm going to go one, two, four, five, six. I'm going to go there because... The fighting is done inside, it looks like. Okay. There are places to be. Now I'm done. All right. I love it. Uh, oh, weird as fuck. The, uh, <laughs> the archers go again. You hear the, the tension of the bowstrings. And then loosing of the arrows. Um, a couple from earlier that you had you had put some guidance on. Delphina, they uh, they aim at the the guy in the ice bowl. Um, you see uh, several others out front beginning to the damage is stacking up pretty heavily on them. Um, Oh, oh, have I hit the point roll 20? Nope, there it is. There it is. It's still reacting. It's, we're fine. We're fine. We're all good here. How are you? <laughs> oh. We're all good here. How are you? Uh, Flynn. <laughs> um. If it seems like I'm ignoring you, I'm just trying to update some of what's happening out front. Okay, cool. Because I've gone like uh, three rounds without doing anything out there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off Karkamus' head. Uh, okay, easy and, enough to do. And then, with his head in hand, uh, I'm going to start marching out towards the front, and I'll give the rest of the troops the, the, like, the follow me sign to head on out. Nice. Um, sure be great if you spoke Dwarven or Undercommon. Uh, Zalvana. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, I'd like to march out there as well. Um, so why don't we just say, why don't you guys go ahead, if you're both going to do that, why don't the two of you and Luca all bring your tokens out to the front of the gate? There's no reason we have to play this 30 feet at a time. Um, and then Delphi and Professor, if, if you guys are coming down or moving back to kind of the front of the wall, you may move yourselves as well. Um, I did have a plan. Hold on. And my feather. <laughs> uh, Your feather can move 20 feet. No, that's got a range of 150. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay right where I am. I'm going to stay on this wall. Okay. <laughs> what are you sizing up? No, nothing. Don't worry about it. All right. I love it. I love it. Um... <laughs> What I will say, we're going to move into just kind of pseudo-narrative for just a moment here, just because I'm not going to make you fight all of that. 
Flynn, you come out and and for sure have the the Karkom's head in your hand. And those Sturgar who aren't engaged in fighting definitely stop and take notice and begin to kind of slowly, they look at each other a little bit and slowly start to kind of move back. Um, so a lot of these kind of basic Durgar back in the back hey. could, that I can't just grab because of other things on the map. I guess I can move that to the map layer. Um, they, um, they begin to kind of move their ranks towards these holes. Um, the ones who are engaged in fighting, maybe they see you, but they can't necessarily do a lot because you've got Targos guards engaging them. We're going to say that following you out are more of the guards from inside as well. Um, the... The battle is in hand. I'm going to give you another chance for any other kind of commanding, leading type stuff that you'd like to do. I want to send half of the troops behind the gates mm -hmm. um, to the wolf's pelt. Okay. And then uh, like, uh, the, have them like, go to the speaker's office and there's like a sweep. Sure. Can. Okay. Yeah. They'll, they'll go in a sweep. Where would you like them to start? Um, Wolf's Pelt. Um, and then the, uh, and then the town hall. Off. Okay. The town hall. And then like working their way towards, towards the docks. Okay. So on the way to the docks, the town hall is first. Yeah. Oh, for the, yeah. So okay. town hall, then Wolf Pelt and then the docks. Then in that order. Okay. Yeah, they will, the part of them will take off. Um, anything else that you have to try to say more skull brandishing or are you going to throw it in the ice bowl or you know defile it in some overt way? No. <laughs> I'm not going to defile it, um, but I will absolutely orange it and like hold it up in front of it, like, over my head. Um, and... I don't, I, I don't think they can speak common, but I'm gonna still yell and like put the emphasis behind it, uh, being like, your leader's dead, your, your, your dealings are done here, you come back, the same is gonna happen to you. Yeah, roll, roll me an intimidation with advantage. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a... 15, so my intimidation is a three. Uh, no, it's a, no, that's my insight. Uh, one. Can I throw? Unless, unless you have Bardic Inspiration. Bardic, unless, unless you have yeah. Bardic Inspiration. <laughs> this is getting advantage for holding the head of their their leader. Yeah, uh, yeah. The situation is oh, turned. I actually, actually have the perfect thing for this. Ah! <laughs> cool. <laughs> He's doing the finger count. It must be high. Six, 16, 7. What is that? 16 20, and 7? 22, 23. It's 23. 23. Uh, yeah, dude, that... All the ones who are not engaged are headed down holes or headed further out into the wilderness. The ones who are engaged are trying to... Uh, kind of like back the battle up so they can head that way. The um the oh. last the last order I think I need from you for the guards is do they let them go or do you want them to chase them to the bitter end? Not to the end. Um to to the holes. Chase them to the holes. Okay. Yep. So they, they will yep. do that. They will, they, they'll kind of spread themselves and begin rounding them up down toward the holes. You, you uh, cause I, I want that message that they're relentless to defend their home. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Message, message sent. These, these two fucks are, <laughs> they're still trying to, they're, they're <laughs> killing that guy still. Like, oh, oh, stop stabbing me. Oh, 
because they doing just a great job down there, boys. Because they cannot figure out how to get out of this kind of icy, glassy five foot hole. Um, it seems for the moment that you have won. <laughs> oh, uh, I was gonna. You you know what they're re- they're retreating. You can still fire shit at them. I'm not saying that you can't. <laughs> um, well, I'm I was gonna cast uh, just a little thing called Hunger of Hadar, and I was gonna drop that right there. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me what Hunger of Hadar does. Um. Well, uh, I've opened a gateway to the dark between the stars, a, a region infested with unknown horrors. Oh, my God. Uh, um, it's a 20-foot radius sphere of blackness and bitter cold. Uh, it is a void that is filled with a cacophony of soft whispers and slurping noises that can be heard up to 30 feet away. <laughs> hey, hey, I hate every part of that. Wow. How long does it stay uh, up? It, uh, it's a minute. It creates a warp in the fabric of space, and the area is difficult to rain. Any creature that starts its turn in the area takes 2d6 cold, and any creature that ends its turn in the area makes a dex save or takes 2d6 acid. You know what? Home are going to have a story for us. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the, the fact that it's a portal to another world and they're jumping, trying to jump down a hole... I. I some of them may end up in that world. Some of them just take regular damage for sure, but some of them you may have transported to another plane, <laughs> a plane of whispers and slurping noises. With... The space between the stars. Yeah. Uh, so for sure, not a lot of them are coming back. Uh, here, let me get my... Plus, it, it's like, it's 2d6 it's... in, 2d6 out. Yeah, so... <laughs> Hold in, ass it out. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's way, way easier. Um, and then I'll just tell Krufio, like, Krufio, Krufio, go! And just make sure that he's on his way following whatever's going down this other hole. Okay. Yeah, and you guys, you see the um, the scouting team, team from the, the SEAL, you see SEAL Team 6, Elf and Dwarf Team 6. Um, as everyone on that one side gets down the hole, you see them kind of sneak out to it, and you see the other two just off into the distance, following the few that left on foot. Um, it seems as though... Why does Buddy keep saying that? No, it's not over till the sun comes out. Um, seems as though things are okay. Until... You hear... Just a blood-curdling yell behind you and it's a woman's voice and you hear someone yell Flynn I turn around start running okay you're gonna go back inside the inside the gates yeah uh I turn around on the wall can I see anything yeah can I follow (laughs) yeah absolutely you all hear it but they called Flynn's name so um, yeah. Flynn, you, you absolutely recognize the voice as Terrace, yep. the, the oldest daughter from the Wolf's Belt. Um, and you guys can see her kind of come running into view and she is, she's just kind of doused in blood and she yells again. She says, Flynn, and she points toward back toward where, you know, the docks and the harbor are. Everyone, please make a perception check. Not good. Am I still blessed? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll say you are. Narrative purposes. Ooh, Delphi. I'm not even going to acknowledge that. <laughs> hey, it's not bad. It's a... Uh, 19. David Ars? 25. So, Luca... And Zelvana and the professor. And then what'd you roll, Flynn? 16. You all notice. So you remember back from a few minutes ago, the, the brightness with which that Uber fireball lit things up in the, in the front. 
you see not as bright, but definitely there's more light behind you or in in the rear of the town than there should be. Let go. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna run towards it. We um, gotta go. Direction. Uh, I'm gonna. If I don't, have, I don't, I don't have any more command now, do I? Uh, I'll give you one more. Um, you've already sent people to uh, to kind of make the rounds a bit. Um, what else would you like someone to do? What else do you want, Flynn? <laughs> um. As it's mainly is like as I'm moving into town, I want to change the sweep order to evacuate. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I will. Yeah, you can absolutely issue that. And then when I change your map here in a moment, uh, I will allow you to change that if you'd like. Uh, you find you you. You get almost to Terrace, and she just keeps pointing as she turns and runs. And I assume that you all follow her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You, uh, as, we can. as you get back toward the wolf pelt, you see kind of a medium number of dead or dying uh, civilians and guards and Durgar. Um, and there's one that is still kind of up and fighting. Uh, Theo and Imdra are fighting him, and Theo looks to have taken a pretty grievous wound. Um, Imdra is just in full rage, just tearing through this guy. But what you really notice as you kind of look from that is the light in the sky. And you notice that all of the ships in the icebound harbor and the ice dock are ablaze. And you think about what Karkam said to you, Flynn. No more fish for Targos. No more economy for Targos. No more Targos. As you watch, do you, do you guys have something you'd like to try? Do you guys have... Healing word. Create, on. create water. <laughs> uh, can you guys put a bunch of flames out? Um... I can, is it magical at all? Like I can dispel magic. You could try, but it looks like good old fashioned regular fire from where you are. Okay. Shit. I mean, I've got my wand of web, but I don't know. It could either smother or it could just make it worse. I think the web is flammable. Okay. So it won't smother it. The, uh, um... you hear, there are a couple of, of, uh, soldiers around that, that you seem to kind of get from them that, the uh, just kind of almost by themselves, the boats all caught on fire, and they would ran out to try to save some of them and would trip over someone who wasn't there. And it was actually Durgar who was who had come in, presumably on the ice, and have just wrought havoc. <clears throat> Uh, so I'm going to cast Healing Word at the highest level. I can cast it to get as many of the people around me, including Theo. Mm, okay, sure. They will all gladly. Yep, no no dead people. That's 16 points of healing. You give it to everybody yeah. that can possibly take it. Absolutely, yeah. You, you, you immediately... The, the wound that Theo has received is is definitely far lessened and, and even Imdra who looked a little bit banged up suddenly looks better and she she helps Theo kind of over to where you guys are and Terrace is there and she's you know hugs 
hooks her father tightly. The um, Russell and Grendel kind of walk up to join <clears throat> as you guys just take in the chaos of, of what's happening. You, um, you, you look over and Lieutenant Guard is walking up, carrying the limp, motionless body of Lieutenant Miat Shield. Um, Can I cast Revivify? The, um, you see a couple of, a couple of the guards that you had known had been out fighting with Russell and Grendel. They're hand pulling a cart, similar to the one that you vaporized, that has wounded soldiers in it, wounded soldiers and town folks, and they're trying to get back to the wolf's pelt where they knew that the infirmary was. Well, I do have a an idea that might could help until you get ships repaired. I don't have any gold to give or I'd give you everything I have. Maybe I have something on me that I can sell, but I can call Freddy and set up a deal with him to catch you fish until until the ships come back and that way you still have an economy. Well, you remember from earlier that one of the guards, or the, actually Guard told you that Freddy was there and willing yeah. to help if if he could in any way. I, I'll, I'll talk to him immediately and let him know that you have no food and that you guys will never hunt him again as long as you as long as he'll help. Someone, someone, someone in the crowd asks you who Freddy is. He's a really, really giant, possibly Leoplorodon looking thing that lives in the lake. There's a, a, f a fisherman, pretty badly beaten, uh, definitely out of breath. There was, there was, a, there, was some, there was a monster in the water. When, when the ships, when the ships caught on fire, people were jumping into the water. He's, he's, he started pulling them out and and placing them on the ice. Uh, I he, see him. He, he even, he said he would try to fill our nets. Did, did I mention he could talk? <laughs> oh God, I think I think I need to sit down. And he he sits down and and maybe voluntarily passes out. He's if I have a health if I have health potion I have my herbalism kit so, and a potion of healing. Um, I'm gonna give him my potion of healing. Okay, you can feed it to him, and he he comes back around, but is still still mentally he's a little more mentally dazed at what's going on. So he's he's back up, but he's still. Out of sorts in his mind a bit. I thought for sure you were gonna say that Freddy started devouring people, and I was. There's a reason I wrote it narratively with the hyphens in there and the pauses, uh, is to make you think that. Uh, um, can, remember can, when can I said, Freddy, "Why like, did I do this to my friends earlier?" Yeah. <sighs> Can Freddy, can Freddy like wag his tail and like put out some fire at all? I don't know. Uh, or drag the ships underwater and then push them back up? I don't know that he could drag the ships underwater. He could try like the dolphin slap thing. Um, I was gonna say, can he like a, a couple do, like, of a, a jet ski splash and like? <laughs> uh, yeah, a, a couple of folks. Like, oh, that's a good idea. And they, you see them kind of running out across the ice down to where the ice dock is is burning and. Uh, that message is, is presumably being delivered. Um, Grendel's there, and he's just, he's kind of watching all of the long faces. And he draws himself up to full stature. And it, it, even louder than he spoke earlier, and more sure of himself, he begins to, to speak to everyone. This town still stands. Most of the people are safe. That is completely due to the fact that Captain Flynn and the Harbingers made plans to protect everything they could. Targos will remember this day, and you will all, and he points to the, the, the group of you and to everyone there, you will all be remembered as heroes. We will pick up the pieces and rebuild, just like Tin Towners always do. 
and will make new preparations to repel the Durgar when... He stops for a moment and he looks at all of you and what you have wrought and says, if they come back or anyone else that might be unwelcome. And there's, there's a little bit of applause in the crowd that kind of starts to take, but it is, that is quickly quashed by people and you hear a chant beginning to form slowly. Harbingers. 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 And they just, the, the chant erupts into just a cavalcade of, of screams and claps and like everyone that is out here is, they're falling over themselves to try to get to all of you, to shake your hands, to, to, to touch you, to thank you. Can I run out to the docks real quick? Because apparently my, uh, my frost brain rapier can, I have like a 30 foot radius. Mm -hmm. um, I can mm -hmm. draw this weapon and it can extinguish all non-magical flames within 30 feet of me. Uh, to put to put out all of the fire in the eye stock and save what you can, you can do that. It would probably take you the better part of half an hour to do it. But you I mean, I can only can. I can only I can only do it once. Oh, she can save one ship. I can, can save, save one you ship. Can save one ship. I mean, uh, that's that honestly is than none. that's honestly is something for absolutely. So yeah, if yeah. you yeah, yeah. If, say, so one you guys, ship compared to none is huge. Honestly. You guys, yeah. you guys see Zalvana just break. In a just the fastest dash you've ever seen her go, just little pieces of snow almost flying off of her, and you see her just running toward the ice dock, and the whichever one looks like it's in the best shape, she and some of the folks there make a decision, and then the fire burning out there suddenly is a little bit lessened on that side, and then she maybe at not quite as quick a pace, uh, rejoins all of you. When Krufiel and the Rangers return, uh, we should be able to take the battle to the Durgar and spare the town the rest. Mm. It might be some time the, the, the Rangers and the, 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 the scouting party, they, uh, they try to take their time and not get discovered. And if it's a nest that held something that large, may need more than just us to take it to them. We may need to enlist the help of at least Bryn Shander, if not some of the other towns. But I agree. We should unite, at least as part of the Ten Towns, and take it to their doorstep. He's intimating to you that it may be a couple of days before you get any intel back on that. Yeah. Don't worry. Krufiel is quite capable. I trust him fully. It's Josie and the girls are out there seeing Theo. They're hugging all of you as though you're their family. Even you, Luca, who are kind of <laughs> kind of strange and still you're strange. You're, you're still a little stinky and you still look like a white dragonborn now, which you didn't look like to her earlier. Um... But the she's again congratulatory. They've they brought you all some 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 refreshment. Not the plan fucking a whiskey, but but definitely something to uh, to wet your whistle with a little bit. Where uh where do, where do the winds take you all now? Oh no. <laughs> Somebody's got responsibilities to the town now as the captain, so who knows what he's doing. Oh, no, this, this mic is provisioning once the sun comes up. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, you see coming in from where the front gates are, there's a, some, some uniformed soldiers that definitely are better dressed um, running forward, and they have like some arms, loads of supplies. You can see that there are, there are clerics among them. Um, they immediately start like giving, you know, blankets and food and, and stuff. And one of them comes up to all of you standing there with Grendel. 
seeming like the the motherfuckers who were in charge here, and it's like, I, uh, I, hi, I'm who's who's in charge? I'm I'm Lieutenant Nash from from Bryn Shander. We had uh, some folks that told us that there was supposed to be a a big a big thing here, and we were we were trying to get here, and then we heard that explosion, and we just we've made best speed to. To, to, to get here but we we've got supplies we've got okay make a make oh make God. something <laughs> to Can see that you don't Luca? make something some sort of check to hide <laughs> you doing that so that you don't get just like totally shit whipped by this guy who's fresh with a group of actual soldiers with him uh, I'll make let's a call it a perform let's hand. call it a performance check a performance uh Shit. I'm going to use my DM inspiration for this then. Please do. <laughs> I got an 18. <laughs> he, uh, just erase that D20 from the slate there. He, uh, or... he, he look, he looks at you. What was the other role? Uh, a five. <laughs> he looks at you quizzically, like, um, okay. Uh, it, weird. Yeah. yeah, we, we heard, we heard the, the explosion and just it, it drove the horses double time to get here. They, there's so, so much. What, what the hell happened? Durgar attacked. Did, Tried did, the city. did they make that, the big ass dish in the front with the. Oh no, that was yeah, the cause of it. <laughs> and he looks at Flynn, he looks at the professor when the professor says that was us. Uh, okay. Uh, well, I'm going to make sure that everybody's got some supplies. Um, uh, see if you can get to the, get those fires out and you'll see some of them kind of run down to the, the docks to see if they can do what they can. You, you see them. I thought he was talking to us, and I no, was like, no, "Good no. plan, bro." No, he's he's talking <laughs> he's talking to his men. You actually see them kind of grabbing grabbing uh, buckets of snow, and they're trying to kind of bucket brigade throw snow on uh, at least the smaller ships that are ice locked. I mean, it, it's it's kind of performative because these ships have been ice locked for. At least a year. Two years. Yeah. Well, not the whole time, but for at least a year, all of the ships in the harbor have been ice locked. So, saving them is like, yeah, you haven't really been fishing from it anyway. <laughs> um, but they're 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 at least trying. So, Harbingers, the battle is won. The battle is yours. You get to decide. Are you you gonna stay another night in Targos? Are you gonna? hit the road and head back to Bremen or head forward to Bryn Shander. Definitely I, think we need a rest. I was, I was gonna say, I, well, I would suggest we at least stay the night mm -hmm. here and then. Okay, you'll have to find some accommodations. The wolf's pelt is full of wounded. I can sleep on the ground outside. So. I can Liaman's tiny hut in the center Oh, wait, town. There's, there's a hotel. Okay. <laughs> With your room in it, Professor. That's true. You got a room that you didn't pay for that the owner of the hotel left, so. No. Yeah, you guys there's that. Could stay in the Luskin Arms. We can do that. I want to talk to either Delphi or Zalvana privately. Are we gonna unpack back burner shit now? Because we're already we're already running long on the game. I'm trying oh, to no, I was about to say only, I'm only, concerned. only one one thing. Only like only one thing. Okay. I was uh, I... Just, just just away from like Sure. Do you want to do, do you want to do it as a secret secret or is it okay if the professor and Luca here? Oh no, the professor and Luca can hear it. Luca doesn't even know. Okay, it. yeah. So <laughs> so either I'm gonna go I, get my bag, guys. I'm I, <laughs> either I, you guys can either go to the Luskin or you can do Tiny Hut. Either way, you'd have you'd be able to have some privacy. We can do the Luskin. It'll be more comfortable there. Okay. I could put the hut inside the Luskin if we really want. That's true. If you really want double security. privacy, double double. <laughs> double, double. Yeah, so you guys get to uh, get to the Luskin and take any rooms that rooms plural that you want, and uh, Flynn, the floor is yours. Um, I still have Karkin's head. Uh, I was not letting that thing go, 
Um, and I'm going to... Like, wait, wait, wait. Like, in a bag, or you just toting it around? By the fucking hair, man. I don't get <laughs> You said I was weird earlier, and now you're just carrying the skull wow. around when it does nothing for us, literally nothing. Um, I, I'm gonna hand it to I'm gonna hand it to Zelvana. I want Delphi to hear because Zelvana knows how fucking serious I am about this. Um, I'm saying that if Leviscus comes asking for my debt in Durgar blood because of what happened with Indra, and I handed the head, and I said, tell him it's paid. Interesting. And if you can tell Austin, leave me the fuck alone, that'd be great too, but... Well, I, I, I could tell him not to bother you. That's very kind of you. I wanted to bite on it, so... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh. I will definitely mention that if uh, if we talk soon. But yeah. Noted. All right. So between all oh, no, no, and... I really think we should discuss. <laughs> we can't. We can't unpack the back burner tonight. We can't unpack it tonight. Um, there's a knock on the door. I'm gonna open it. Alrighty. Uh, it's one of the town guard, one that uh, you've seen around, but you're not familiar. You don't know their name, and don't ask me what it is because they don't have one. <laughs> um, they are. Uh, it's like, oh, uh, oh, this uh, just just asked to bring this to you, sir. And they look at you, and just just like Imdra, where her eyes were just frosted over. A different man's voice now comes out and says, oh, okay, so okay, message received. Impressive. Not complete, but very impressive. And then that man's body Levi? just, that man's body just falls kind of limp into your arms, I'll, Flynn. I'll catch him. Yeah, I'm not going to let him hit the ground. And, and he looks up at you and, it, did, did. Oh Jesus! Ah, uh, was I sleepwalking? What? I'm sorry, I Captain. No, uh, why am Why am I here? Uh, it was a long night, big explosion. You're dazed, and you ended uh, up over here. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, thank Write you. Write yourself up and get to the wolf's pelt. Have them look at you. Oh, uh, okay. Thank you, Captain uh, Harbingers. And then he will leave. I really think we should need to have this discussion. <laughs> Going to bed! We can talk about it tomorrow! <laughs> <laughs> and that is where we're going to end the stream for tonight. Holy shit.